It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. This episode has been brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Um, What's up, everybody? It's Schultz here. We have some special guests in the building. We have Mouse Jones, everybody. Mouse Jones is here. Okay. Big, 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 big. Fan of Mouse Jones, friend of the podcast, family member even. Mm. We also have Akash Singh in the yeah. building. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. We are here. Uh, Wax and uh, Charlemagne are on vacation or some shit. Where are they at, Taylor? Charlemagne's on vacation. Wax still Wax, got COVID? No, he just couldn't make it. <laughs> he just couldn't make it. Okay, well, that's great that he has his priorities. Uh, <laughs> that he has his priorities straight. There's just no excuse we couldn't lie. There's nothing else that we could do we can make up to make him look a little better. Aren't you supposed to be the he producer? He doesn't have COVID. He doesn't, he doesn't have COVID. COVID. No. It's done. All right, yeah. that's all we care about. We would much rather him have COVID. Um, listen, guys, we're here, and uh, we've got a lot of things going this week, but first, I just want to check in with Mouse, man. It's great to see you, dog. It's been Good a while. Good to see you. I Absolutely. see you back on the road. It's nice to see. Yes, yes. It's fun. fun place to be. 100%. Um, are we going to talk about your outfit, or are we just going to move <laughs> on? We're here. What, what's going on here? Man. Did you wear this because it, you knew you were going to be in a comfortable place with me? Yeah, I figure. I figure. Listen, Andrew dresses very comfortably. Is this appropriation? Yes. Are you appropriating farmer culture? My culture, not your culture. It's, not it's your really not my culture. Not your I'm resident. closer to it than you. Yo, Texan. that's true. I'm a Texan. That's a text and an Indian. And Mad Indian. farmers uh, in India. Yeah, hundred percent. We got support yeah. fully. Yes. Well, <laughs> I just want. I just want to feel at home. You just want to feel at home. Okay, well, you're here. Well, if, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, Mouse came here dressed as Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> so, Kyle Rittenhouse is in the motherfucking building and somehow killing it. Um, I, I got to check out one of your shows, man. I always text you when I see yeah. the videos on Instagram. Videos are it's, wild. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. You guys it's, got the best job in the business. Listen, I do a job that nobody in the world could do. Okay. Like, there's a lot of hosts. Well, I don't even think there's hosts anymore. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I, and I, I know this is going to sound like bragging, but hey, Taylor. Taylor, we'll, you have one we'll record, job. We're recording a podcast. I didn't you have know if you one knew. fucking job, Taylor. Just okay. Didn't know on. if you knew we were doing a podcast. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, so I do a job nobody else could do, right? Yeah. When when it comes to hosting. Yeah. That's debatable. Anybody. <laughs> no, no, no. Son, son. Nobody else could do that. I'm waiting for the explanation. Yeah. yeah. Nobody, nobody else could do what I do. Okay. No, no, Tell not, me why. We're not hosting. Anybody could get on. I don't even think anybody. Some people can get on stage yes. and get through a show, bring up other people. Yeah. Move. I do a job that nobody else could do because it doesn't matter if I host a party, doesn't matter if I host an event, uh, fashion show, whatever you want to call it. The time I'm on stage, it's going to feel like a show just for that person. Um, just for that person. It doesn't matter who. It, it's literally impossible for you to try and encapsulate and have anybody else do it. You, really? You, you will have people looking stupid. Really? Why is that though? Because from the outside, it mm-hmm. seems like you do a great job. There's no question. But I feel like there are people that could do it. Like throughout there's no history, more, there's, there's no more people hosts. that are good. The, where, just where, all the ho- where, the ho- where the hosts go? That's a great point. They just, uh, they, at open mics, comedy shows, uh, making, you know, $12 a night or whatever. There's hosts is my point. Yeah, but they might not they, have the skill, though. I guess that's no, what No, like said. I said at the beginning is they... Do the people know what you do? That's a good that's question. That's what I'm Maybe trying we to figure out. I've seen the clips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what do you do that elevates the experience for everybody else? Or even let's first talk about the experience so people aren't confused. So, so I'm the host of I'm, I'm the host of the greatest show on Earth, Trap Karaoke. Yeah. Um, where I guess before I got there, it was just a show centered around black people being able to have a karaoke space. Yeah. Where you know you come up, sing your favorite Great songs, idea. right? Yeah. There's no way you know you go to your n- normal karaoke bar. Yeah. What was that spot? Gators or something in, in Williamsburg. I don't know. You go there and you want to hear back that ass up. You're not. They don't have those songs in there, ah, right? So yeah, 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 you know yeah. the creator of the of trap karaoke created a space where you could sing these songs, and 
I quite honestly, it's you, black karaoke. Yeah, it is yeah. black karaoke. It's a yeah. space where we get to celebrate yeah. our our culture, yeah. our legends in the way that we want to do it. Yeah. Um. So when I get there, uh, I came on February. March of 2019. Yeah. The show had already been going on for like probably five years at that point. Yeah. I get there and now it's completely different. It's Be crazy. Because when I get there, it's like, okay, so that's how you were doing it. Yeah. Let me show you how to fill these pockets. Uh huh. Because if not, it was the difference between that and any other party mm. where you're just playing music. That's yeah. it, right? You're a party, you got four hours, you buy your ticket, yeah. you're going to drink and you're going to listen to music. Mm -hmm. You could go anywhere to do that. Mm -hmm. When I'm on that stage, now it's, I'm talking directly to you about something that you're like, you was there too? And then you look to your left and you look to your right and you see other people and you're like, y'all yeah. was there too? Yeah. And I just, I just do a job, I do a great job of reminding you that we all kind of grew up together. We experienced the world together. So you have like together. bits that go with the songs that people are kind of saying. Absolutely. Got you. And Absolutely. these are like stories that are stories, fun. Stories, um, like call and response. Um... So, for example, uh, yeah. and I'm gonna tell I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this one, and if we see other people doing it, all we know where it came from. So, I do this one where I get the crowd really hype, right? And yeah. I say, um, after I get them real hype, I say, uh, I say, I shout out the women. I say, mm -hmm. black women, I need you to make some noise. Taylor, let's do it right now. Let's let's reenact it right now. You want to do it, Taylor? Do we need to give you a song? Let's do it. No, let's I, do I, it. No, this he song is already okay. Here. Go, 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 go. I'm I'm black women too. <laughs> The two of us are in this together. Let's go. Come on, come on. Let's do this. Let's do it. So I say, I'm hyped. It's trap karaoke. <laughs> I'm hyped up. I'm ready to sing. Let's go. So I say, come on. I say, black women. Black women. Make some noise. And they, of course, they're going to make, make noise. Make some noise. Make some, hey! Taylor, you going to leave us hanging? Yes. He's a black woman. Me you too. too. Black women. Black women. Come on. Whoa. So like I said, so with the black woman bit, I say, I say, you know, black women make some noise. And they make noise. And then I say, I, I bring up a whole bunch of things that they would know. I'd be like, you know, make make some noise. Uh, you know, fat black women, skinny black women, big booty, little booties, because you know, little booties matter. They pop. Yeah. Then it's uh, then from there. So now I'm, you're just building them. You're building them. You're building them. And I'm like, you know, I'm talking about the four C, the three C, the four A, four one, uh, three C, three B. That's the hair types. So now they're like, oh, this nigga knows us. Wait, what is that? What's that's the, the hair, hair types? Oh Look, your curl pattern. Yeah. Oh, what does Taylor have? Can you guess? Just by the oh, well, I can't tell because she has a uh, what's the, the sewing. Yeah. Yeah. So she has sewing, so I can't really see what her Meek Millies I'm are like. Four C. You're a four C. Yeah. Okay. So that's the most coarse. So that's the tightest curl. Ah. Uh, okay. So once I oh they oh the the natural curl yeah they mm -hmm. have a rating system yes mm -hmm. oh dude I can't wait to use this hold on so <laughs> get, get it, uh, this bit is stolen mouse. <laughs> Now I'm about to give me all the details for the black girl coming to the show. Okay. Now, but if I get it wrong, that's fucked oh, up. Oh, that's why. That's why. I'm just What's gonna, your beard? My beard. So, so my beard, I'm going to say, is it's more a of a 4A going into a 3C. Much four like a, my hair. 3C. Yeah. Wow. This is crazy. So, like, black women's hair is like bras and shit. Yeah. But black people, it's, it's all hair, all hair has a curl but pattern. It is, yeah, but white people, we don't have different types of no, hair. And white no, people got curly hair, hair too. Y'all are, like a, are, a no, are one have the, I'm a Jewish... triple D. No. Wait, no. I mean, I'm an A. A, a is the more a. fine. Yeah, is I'm the, a one A. Is the least. One A. Yeah, one A. What are A's, what is Squid Game? Cast of Squid Game. What goes before A? The, yeah, they're not on there. They're not on they, the They map. might be just double numbers. Yeah. Or like a one one. one. <laughs> they don't even get the letter. See, she's warming up. Now she's good. She's warming good, right? up. Now she's getting on board. Stop doing work, Taylor. You at work. <laughs> okay? Stop doing work at work. Focus on this, all right? Go watch Bully and the Beast podcast. Boom. I did it. Okay? <laughs> Everybody go check out Bully and the Beast podcast. And they got a live show. Make sure you check that shit out. We all going to be in there. All right? You know what I mean? With the three C's, the two D's. No, those are titties. Those are two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, the 4C, 4B, the 4A, okay. 3C, 3B, 3A. Now, anything past that, that's it's not us. So I what is that? Who's white people. Oh, really? Yeah, this, this room, this, I, it's for the room. This is, this is, this bit is for the room. I think my wife is a 3A. I think is what she told me. Because I remember having to try to figure this out one time, and I was like, I don't know. I don't believe it. You I, bought I your wife I don't believe it. No, sure. No, you, they you buy bought our hair. Yeah. <laughs> ten, 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 ten. They buy our hair. Don't get it too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, but her hair is curly. So there's uh, like a there's like a whole yeah, thing. Mm -hmm. She sent me mad types one time, and she's like, "Which one am I?" I was like, "I don't know." Three A. <laughs> this before or after y'all were married. This before. This before. You passed. Yeah, yeah. 
I oh, this guess. is fire. Okay, this is good. Yeah, and then once they're built at that point, because once I say that, they're like, oh, this, he knows us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're up there. So I attacked Trap Carry much like, you know, you could attack this shit like a party. Yeah. Or you can attack it like a show. Yeah. And that's what separates us. Mm, so you make it a show. We make it a show. Me and the creator, we make this thing a mm-hmm. show. We sit down. Here, we're going to do these segments. Yeah. It's going to go from here. We'll have them here. Yeah. We'll hit the R&B. We have them here. Yeah. Everybody and now the people it. are involved in the show. They're because not just watching not, the show. They're it's a part not, of the show. Because it's not ours. It's theirs. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? And that's yeah. the most important. The thing I loved most about your show, or even, because I think sometimes being friends, some people forget that it's cool to be fans of your friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing I, I love most about you guys is that you never forget about the fans. You never oh, forget yeah. that it's only but so much that separates us, right? Yeah. Like, yes, we all, we're like the Avengers. We all have this like, Talent that no one else possesses, right? Yeah. We we talk and people listen. Yeah. That's a superpower. Yeah. That's the only thing that separates us from our fans. Interesting. So when you look at it like that, I heard you say, and I never had the verbiage for it, but I would just be like, yo, you, it, it has to count. And yeah. I, I tell people that in the beginning of the show, every show, I'm like, yeah. It took you seven days to get here. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you waited. You had to deal with whatever bullshit yeah. you had to deal with at Got work. A babysitter, you had to found Uber. a babysitter. You found an Uber. Dinner. You found yeah. the dinner. You did all of that, and then you paid eighty dollars for these tickets. Yeah, I'm gonna make these next four hours worth it. Yeah, and I heard you say it right before the show, and I was like, and then I seen the show, and I'm yeah. like, there it goes. They got yeah. their money's worth. They got these you, people man. got their money's worth, and that's all I care about. That means a lot to me, man. It's always meant a lot to me, especially like when you got people coming out for you. It's one thing early in your career where you're performing for strangers, right? Yes. That they were just like, I need to do something. I need to get out the house. Absolutely. And then they're there, and then you got to win them over. But like when people plan their whole weekend around it. People no, they fly got in. a hotel, they got flights. They That's got, the craziest yeah. part. That's when yeah. I said I couldn't take this shit for a joke. Yeah. Right? Like, I came in as probably, I came in probably a little elevated than the last host because yeah. I was already me when I got there. Yeah, yeah. Right? I didn't, trap karaoke just helped solidify me. Yeah, yeah. It, it became like a commercial for me yeah. where like I get to be in these cities. So so somebody who didn't think we, I was, they were going to see me until Guys Next Door went on yeah. the road or until BT or All Star came today. Oh, I get to see Mouse this weekend because Trap Karaoke's coming. Yeah. So now once I started realizing that, and once I started realizing like, oh, y'all are coming for me and you're leaving with this experience. Yeah. So you don't know, right? So now I, there's no way of me knowing when I hit that stage, who's here for me and who's here for Trap Karaoke. Right. I just got to flip it and I got to make sure everybody's one. Yeah. yeah. And you started realizing that once I got on the tour and there was these lines, right? Yeah. I, you, we, we live in New York. We're used to seeing celebrities. We're used to seeing people we're fans of. Yeah, yeah. So when it turns on you, you're kind of like, oh, that's cool. You don't think that, right? I see yeah. some, somebody asking me, oh, you was on Brilliant Idiots. Or, yeah, you yeah, was yeah. on Brexit. You was here. You was there. Oh, yeah. God, next door. I love it. That's, we're in New York. You're used yeah. to that. It wasn't until I seen the, those lines after the Trap Karaoke show. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What are we doing? Yeah. They had to take a picture with you. Yeah. Lines, 200, 300 people. To yeah. Take, after the show is over yeah. at 11. Yeah. We typically don't get out of that venue until one I'm taking pictures. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't waste these people's time. Yeah. I'm not about yeah. to play with y'all. Yeah. So when no matter, so it doesn't matter if I'm on trap karaoke, it doesn't matter if I'm doing courtside studios for Mountain Dew. It yeah. doesn't matter if I'm doing the BT experience at the Stable Center. If I touch that stage, mm-hmm. you're gonna it's gonna be worth it. And these and these venues that you guys are doing look pretty big. Like all, it looks like you got all um all theaters. Theaters, yeah. It looks like you got like yeah, we're doing a couple thousand people in there. Three, three thousand, thirty five hundred people. Wow. Wow. They're selling out. And where are you finding that many uh vaccinated black people? None of my business. <laughs> no, that's a job. That's a job for the person who creates it. We got some. We got some fake bags cards Definitely. to get you into the trap karaoke show. Last yeah. show I saw was Louisiana. I don't think they're even checking. I think it's a Southern black tour. I think you're doing. Hey, but no, but well, we I got mean, to New York. I mean, that, <laughs> I see some people in there. I was like, yeah, yeah, all right. yeah, 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 yeah. Kyrie, nigga, nigga you're Kyrie, just, you're Kyrie, famous. Kyrie, you're famous for not being vaccinated. So, so this nigga Kyrie's backstage. <laughs> nah, but that that's fucked us up on the road. I'm sure you yeah. felt that shit too, yeah, which definitely. is like. And I say it jokingly about uh, about black people, but in, in all seriousness, there are people like, yo, I want to come to the show, but I'm not getting vaccinated. It became like a political thing for them. Yeah. And they're like, yo, I can't, I bought tickets, I can't come. Th- that, so and that was New York. Hurts, sorry, it kind of hurts sorry. the diversity of the show. Yeah, because I want those motherfuckers less. there too, because that energy is interesting. Yeah. yeah. I have want those the, conflicting. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the tension. That's the thing you like to play with. Absolutely. Like, 
one of the things, I mean, you see in our show, but like one of the things about that I love about our show is like everybody's there. Like it's the most diverse show in comedy. Yep. And the reason why we could say all these jokes is because everybody's in the room. Everyone's in the it room. It feels weird if someone's not in the right. room to talk about right. that. But when they're right there, you're making that joke. Yes. We just it's talk like, shit about family. You're right there. Like if you if he's laughing, you can't be offended on behalf of him. Yeah, you can If I she's can't laughing, believe, you yeah. can't be offended no, on behalf absolutely. of her. Like, absolutely. hey, we're all in this shit together. It is what it is. It's absolutely. like it's like uh, like whatever my homies tell me about like the army, like the experience in the army. Like once those are your brothers and they're keeping you alive, right? All the barriers go down. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely, it really does become a family yeah. dynamic. Yeah. Only everybody looks different, but it's like, yo, these jokes are gonna fly. Yeah, boot camp is was one of the only times where I realized. Oh, that. that's right, you were yeah, in uh, the navy. Oh, that's so right. So when you realize, so when you go that. overseas and you realize that and you see that, the only thing that separates y'all. I didn't know you were Facebook. overseas. Yep. Get out of here. Yep. Kill someone. What are you doing? Come on. Come on the name of How country, you gonna kill dog? people in Long Island and not do it overseas? <laughs> 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 they found you. We gotta put him to good use. Am I, am I dressed like someone that? Would I know do you look like, like you that? killed a turnip. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, were you really overseas yeah. like that? Yeah, and like getting it in. Where I was attached to teams that was getting it in. Okay, course. what was your what was your job out there? So I was a HM. So I was a corpsman. What does that mean? So uh, a medic. Th that would be the best way to put it. Is oh really? Oh shit! Well, so, you just with no so I so I was in Italy for six months. We did, uh, what was that? The Ramage was out of, not Newport News, Norfolk. So that did, we did Bahrain. We did uh, the Straits. We did, where else the fuck we go? What's that place in? It's near Greece, but it's not in Greece. It's off the coast. Sardinia? Mm-mm. Not Miko. What's that shit called? I don't know. No idea. I always fucking forget this spot. It doesn't matter. You could say it doesn't matter. We yeah, it, yeah. We, we don't yeah. fact check here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the craziest thing. Yeah. But to your point, when you're talking about people from vastly different places and yeah. typically would not even like each other. Yeah. And then you having to like each other. Yeah. And then you come home and you realize. No, I don't. I don't like this person because you see their Facebook post. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. it's but there that was your separate homie. you. Oh, there you're like, bro, my bo my boy's a Marine. And he said like, he's like, dude, one of the coolest things about the Marines was that um, I made like really close friends with all these people that I would never be friends with outside of it. Mm -hmm. Like one of his boys who like does his accounting, uh, not even counting like investment stuff is like this like Mormon dude with like 10 kids. And he's like, when in my life am I going to connect mm -hmm. with a guy like that, become best friends and then just trust him with my future, just yeah. give him all my money. And it's the Marines. That's a specific mm -hmm. place, or the military. I'm trying to think of other types of situations. It's I think shit be like a this. life or death type thing. Yeah, if it's not life or death. It could get like stakes got to be high. Yes, and so, then everything else is less important. Something about life or death, like it, it brings all of your. Um, it, it cuts away the bullshit. Yeah, dumb shit like uh, race matters right. when there's no stakes. Yeah, when we got real stakes. Bro, I don't give a fuck what you look like. We got things to do. Well, because it just becomes good guy, bad guy. I don't know if race is the one that... Yes, I agree with the thought part. I just don't know if race is the one that... Because when you think about it, right? If we're home, yeah. race still... You could be... You look at cops, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they like to think that it's all blue. Right. But it's not. Because within the blue... There's still black cops that are treated away. And you're away. saying you'll still feel that way at, in the military. There was still that there. Yeah. Because you, you, you realize, yeah. okay, those guys are over there. I, yeah. These guys are over I, here. Look, I see that. Like, people are going to couple up naturally. That's going to mm -hmm. happen. But like, and, but, like, when it's go time, when it's, like, war time. Oh, when... Bullets flying. You just want to go home. Yeah, it's good guy, bad guy. Yeah, you just, you just like want to go home. In every one of the movies where like um, the aliens come, like the first thing we do is call China and Russia. We get on a group call and we're like, yeah. yo, are we friends now? Can we take out the aliens? And everybody's like, all right, we're going to take out the aliens. It's like, that's literally, that's all we need to have for everybody to get along. That's the whole Independence Day. That's, that's so just the invite the aliens. Day. It's every movie with yeah. aliens, right? It's we literally just need a bad guy. I think the Watchmen or something had a plot like that. Like if we had a fake Bro alien yeah, bad guy. and it brought all the, the bad guys. I mean, it brought all the heroes back together. Yeah. yeah. And that's all we need. One but, fake But clearly, that guy. doesn't work here. Say what? We, well, that doesn't work in America. Why, why? We have the aliens and we still are separated. Nah, because we don't have aliens. We just got the ships. What, what, what's the war for? 
I don't know. Like, I don't even believe in the aliens thing. The aliens got to present a threat. Just as we see aliens, we're not going to freak out. If they blow up a fucking building or two, then it's like, oh, yeah. we're at war. We, got, we don't have but time. just got to hurry up then. Yeah. yeah. They just got to hurry up. Yeah, just get it done. Just yeah. Hurry up. Blow some shit up. Let's go. Just yeah. wait till this tour is over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let us get it in first. Then you can fuck, then you can fuck <laughs> some re shit up. up Let's re up after this pandemic fucked us up for you. Talk. How fucked up would that be if you're an alien, you travel like light years and you got here like when everybody's quarantined? <laughs> <laughs> right you're like man earth sucks these motherfuckers don't leave the house like no wonder they didn't discover us yet like they, <laughs> they, been, yeah, they, they left boring, yeah. Yeah, they dude. left they were like yeah no it's, i'm yeah. out trash right <laughs> I'm out. maybe that's why we're seeing them maybe they got cocky like that i don't know you you think about aliens do you believe in aliens i do really yeah just probability to me it's like they, we can't be the only thing here i know that's what generic that's what everybody do you says, think they look but weird? It, it makes sense i don't know what they look like i don't know if they okay let me small, let me rephrase that question because it whatever. don't matter if they're he it don't matter if aliens exist or not if we can't see them right mm. it's do you it's, think they're on earth right yeah, now do yeah that's the question i want to ask or if not right now they've come i think maybe i think and yeah. i see that too i guess i think i think they i think they left when trump left you think why, they, why? I think why? they stayed. They were entertained they and then they right. got bored. Yeah. Why the guy do all this? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah, roll yeah. credits. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This guy's sleeping through meetings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I go home for this. this. Oh, 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 this is this is the close. Yeah, let's go. We, we're out of here. So Taylor brought up an article that said aliens could come back to Earth by traveling back on our own spacecraft, scientists warn. <laughs> I don't even so know how that makes sense. What did sense. that make? Yeah, I didn't understand it. If we can't get to them, they can't get to... They're they not getting some back bacteria to... that could like attach itself to a spaceship that as we explore Earth and fly, I mean, explore oh. outer space and fly to outer space, let's say we land on Mars. Some yeah. bacteria could fucking attach itself to that ship, flies back in like and it survives. The symbiote. Mm. Like symbiote. Did you guys hear that Spider-Man, no way home tickets... Wow. All gone. We're going for $10,000, $10, yo? Every, Who are, I think people are just listening. There's no way anybody's buying. That's it. You know, no, it's a no, fake no, crisis think, when you no, list no, no, your no, house. No, no. You don't think somebody? You, we there's a whole fucking Comic Con thing that happens every year, twice a year, yeah. in every city. You don't think somebody's paying ten thousand dollars for? Not no. when you can wait a week to no. spend fifteen dollars on it. Yeah. No. No. We can do the same thing about sneakers, clothing items, and people still. Not no. sneakers. Sneakers sell out. Is gone. Son. No, son, you could just son, wait. You just, I didn't get off whites when they dropped, and now they're going to be fucking $40,000. Yeah, you're the victim. I'm the victim here. Yeah, yeah. Can't relate. <laughs> I, you know how long I kept this a secret? <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> it's fucking devastating. I'm Isn't devastated. That fucked up. You made Virgil's death about you, dog. Son, who else it about? How the fuck you make Virgil's death about you? Who else you? could it be about? Just spend yeah. the extra 2500 bro. The guy deserved it. It don't go to Virgil. Yo, do you feel bad? <laughs> do you feel I bad? I have mine, so I'm No, good. do you feel bad about criticizing Virgil for donating nope. $50 to Black Lives Matter back nope. in the day? No, you well, ain't shit for that. You no, ain't but shit I also for that. You I ain't also, shit for that. Also, you should give me your sneakers for that. Facts. <laughs> My foot's too big. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> No, me. I got started with it. Yeah, yeah, what's that? I, I, I tried to use my black ball oh, then and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. call me on Taylor it. Taylor might be able to fit that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, do you remember? <laughs> you <tight on> that. <laughs> Come on now, bro. Taylor, did you did you criticize Virgil for only doing fifty dollars to Black Lives Matter yeah. back in the day? Yeah. You I, did, and that was fucked up because you know what why he was is doing. It fucked up? He was no, fighting cancer. No, 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 no. no offense. No offense. Dude. No one knew about his cancer. You don't respect uh, Virgil Abloh because you've never thought something and not said it. Mm. Wait, what? Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I never thought. Wait, say it one more time. You know how you'll be on the podcast and then you'll just say some shit you don't need to say sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> Virgil didn't do that. He said something. He had something he could have said, and he decided not to that's say great, it. That's great, though. Not great, but I'm saying as in like that's fine. <laughs> that's noble. That's admirable. That's no, I that's believe it's admirable. I think it's dope. Yeah, it's dope. Truly, because you don't want people to. It's the same, I guess, reason as uh, Chadwick. Chadwick. Grossman. Yeah. But yeah. um, I mean, we're also but not black. like like you just, like you said. Why are you only giving fifty five dollars? Because not oh, every black he person believes black lives that. matters. But he also, look at all the that's cops. Crazy though. Well, he also gave twenty five thousand dollars to like the bail. To get black people, oh, okay. so I didn't know that. So, so yeah, but yeah. see, so you didn't know. But that's why. I, but that's why it pays to shut up. Hmm. Facts. It how pays much, every time to shut up. How I, much? How much you donate to Black Lives Matter? Um, lie. Five hundred. Don't do that. 
I did oh, do drive shit. home. You gave five hundred? Oh shit. I have people that's, that's like it? a part of it. Five <laughs> hundred? Yes, so you can been black like your whole life oh, and all you can give is five hundred. That ain't shit. shit. That's yo, fucked up. Can I be honest shit. with you? That's some real two A behavior, yo. I'm not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> That's some two A man. I thought you were more. I thought you were more three C type of girl, but that was some real two A man. Oh, that might have even been one A. That's some real one A donation. Five hundred dollars of Black Lives Matter. That's that one A. Like you lost the shorts in the foot race. That's oh, you were running one A oh. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yo, because <laughs> a four C would have smoked his ass. I ran a four C. My, I was running so fast my hair curled up you didn't see me at the, I was looking like Bob Ross at the end of that race I just started painting for no reason just, just out of nowhere that's what I do oh shit I was froed up after that Okay, oh, don't ever you come at me again. So but seriously, annoying. a weak ass donation like that, that's some two A shit right, right there, girl. That was weak. That's, that's two A shit, yo. Your whole outfit costs guys? more than that. Your no, whole outfit, your whole outfit John, don't cost more than five hundred. This is hey. this is on sale. Hey, 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 hey no. tell me, tell me how, how tell me how much you got. Tell me how much you got on the wrist. <laughs> tell me how hey, tell me how much the fit cost. Tell me how the fit cost, Taylor. Okay, five hundred on the five hundred on the donation. Five hundred on the donation. What's that guy's name? I don't know his name, but that shit is hilarious. You know what I'm talking about? He's with the brass. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fifty thousand. Okay, 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 Yo, he got to pull up on people and ask about BLM donations. Ask Taylor first. How much for the bail? How much for the bail money? Okay, okay. Talk to me nice, Taylor. Say what? How much did you spend? I gave my life. I gave 10,000. I gave my life. I gave at the very least 500. I think I gave 1,000. And I'm Indian. Yeah. How come I think Black Lives Matter more than you, Taylor? You have more money than me. That's a good point. Wow. She wow. probably gave, you there. She <laughs> gave proportionally more than you. That was good. Proportionally, she gave proportionally more no, than you. Proportionally more than you. I still think you guys pay her more than $500. No, mm -mm, I don't think mm -hmm. so. How much do you give? My life. Is that every we're day. already black? Uh, every day. <laughs> I wake up, I wake yeah. up, and I'm here. You know, he ain't give a, he ain't give a goddamn dollars. It was going back to me. It was going to me. Yo, me. That's funny though. Should black people have to donate to BLM? Not black men. That's like if you work for the government, do, should you pay taxes? Yeah, you pay taxes. No, nah, but like we I'm should, getting. Should. Nah, if you're in the military, you don't gotta pay taxes, right? It's like it's going right back to me. No, we yeah, but this got is the taxes. bail fund, dog. This is people laying down their freedom. For oh, you, you gotta be smarter than that. This is people laying down their freedom. For I feel you, dog. not who. So the wait, you, didn't, you didn't tell nothing. I, 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 I didn't donate anything. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. You and Trump donate the same no, amount of money. I'm gonna tell, tell, tell you, can I be honest? I'm gonna tell you exactly no, why. No, no, at least he free Kodak I'm, Black. Yeah, you ain't free, yeah, you ain't free Kodak. You, ain't free Kodak. you should have kept Kodak. You didn't free Kodak. Yo, how baller was that to free Kodak, yo? <laughs> be honest. How fucking <laughs> dope was if that? He really wanted to show Kodak. Kodak. He should have free Kodak and Come kept Kodak. Obama not free and Kid Rock? No one should. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think y'all would. No, we wouldn't. No. We keep that, keep that motherfucker locked no, up. No, I'm gonna take a shower. Do some why, shampoo. I'm gonna tell you kid. why I didn't, went, why I didn't do the bail. Because yeah. uh, I seen it, I was like, should I give? And I started yeah. thinking. I said, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I had to bail myself out. Ooh. <laughs> why? Had to figure it out on my own. Ooh. Yeah, but you were <laughs> protesting. Yeah. Mouse a, a hard car. ass dad, you bro. You were doing <laughs> shit, dog. Oh. Why did you? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 that's what I was doing. Wait, why did you move <laughs> 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 But if they offer you to host the motherfucking march, would you do it? With bells and whistles. <laughs> we'll be swag surfing our way to freedom! <laughs> <laughs> they gotta have Mouse host the next BLM march. You ain't shit, I'm Mouse. donating. <laughs> I'm Who bailed me out? <laughs> me. I did it. Why were you in jail in the first place? Taylor! Your business. That's the point. No, that's the point. <laughs> Well, Taylor, that's the yeah, why yeah, was he in jail the in the first place? Because of an unfair fucking system that you donated five hundred dollars to. Yeah, if you would have donated maybe a thousand. The been white jail. cis that's patriarchy. True. Both y'all ain't shit. That's true. What? Both y'all ain't shit. I can do as long as she goes. As long as she goes down. <laughs> Wait, no, for real. You really are the worst. Hold on, Al. How much you donate? Al's for real. Give a fucking cop. You gotta donate extra. You gotta donate extra, bro. Nah, I donated my time. 
But it, Chalaki got something. Yeah, nah, that's nah, what you eat. I'm Chalaki. Chalaki. Y'all are donating my time. So there's some poor black Nigga dude. Alex was around. In the he's court. right so here. This poor, the poor black dude in the court. Way. I was looking the other he, way. Alex, <laughs> he's fighting for his life. You, Alex was the he worst. gets a little bit out of hand. Al running up to it. Calm down, sir. No, <laughs> Alex, Alex, Alex was the worst kind. Alex was the worst kind. Alex was the worst kind. He was No, he'll be like this. Alex was a fucking bailiff, so he'll be over there like, so, you can't put it. You can't be on your phone, bitch. Don't put me on fucking blast in front of this fucking court. I already look crazy. I don't wore my glasses trying to look smart. Yeah. I got this two big suit, <laughs> yeah. and now yeah. Adam look innocent. And now Adam just put me on fucking blast. They don't think people with glasses commit crimes. <laughs> he be whispering. Up. He, yeah, these glasses are fake. Lock them up. <laughs> Lock them up. <laughs> Alex, you're fucked up. Alex, Alex. fucked up. No. You, should, you should donate your tour earnings Yo, to did fucking you, Black Lives you Matter. See, you see how white people WTF do this shit, bro? Do you see how we just divided right now? <laughs> we got all the black people fighting amongst each other. This is fucked up, you man. You let them do that, son. You let them do that, man. What's wrong with us whites, bro? Come on, Mouse. What's wrong with us? Mm-mm. Oh damn! <laughs> thought, <laughs> that's where I draw the line. <laughs> you're uh, not listen, gonna get mouse, dude. Say you're what? not gonna get him on any of that shit. I know you're he's good. Him, yeah, you're not gonna get him. Minnie's white. Donate money to black people. Nothing. He's he's ungettable. He's ungettable, bro. I love this. I need to find out who the biggest donor to Black Lives Matter is. So far in this room. It's it. Taylor, Impossible. the biggest black donator to Black Lives Matter. Impossible. Black. At the very least, I'm tied with her because I get. And but I you're not black. But you're not black though. I probably gave five of one because I'm Indian. I'll always be given the fucking extra one dollar. But, <laughs> but you're not black. That's an though. Indian tradition. <laughs> you you keep not <laughs> listening to me when I say this. Yeah. <laughs> of the black people. Oh, of the black people. Yes, but yeah. of all the people, y'all ain't shit. No, I don't. I donate more. I donate more than that. Day. I donate more than that. Oh, so there First you go. of all, I donated more than everybody. I bailed out and never got that money back. Therefore, you bailed yourself out, dude. Because of a system, of a system that, that forced him to G. rob oh, people on the streets of Suffolk County. Jesus Christ. Because yeah. of a system. Yeah. Nassau or Suffolk? Both. <laughs> Son, you live on Long Island, bro. You live on, on Long these Island. These nice cul-de-sac mm-hmm. whites terrorizing know, them. They deserved it. Did they? No, that yes. I believe. But you lived on Long Island. I don't buy your struggle story. No, Long Island was kind of rough, dude. Yeah. My struggle. I was Wait, about, tell me, because of a system. Story? Because of a system, I had to do. I'm a black man, no matter what. Exactly. <laughs> no matter what system, I'm, in, I'm a black <laughs> man. Yeah, 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 but you don't gotta sell drugs because you're a black I guy. I never sold drugs. Never sold drug day in my life. That was never my thing. Oh, never, what was your thing? You oh, what are we doing here? <laughs> and we've had this discussion off air. That's exactly where it's gonna stay. He, he thought he came so far, came in with dungarees and shit. I tried like, we don't to know exactly what the fuck he's been doing. Okay, with his of mice and men outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you need to do. You need to be Lenny from Mice and Men, just petting some fucking one A. <laughs> so hey, soft. Um, it's so soft. Men, mouse. Oh, oh chosen one, dog. I'm a motherfucking chosen one. Yeah, yeah. I'm the motherfucking chosen one. That might be the greatest. I'm just saying, bro. Mm -hmm. Let's do an ad. (laughs) Okay, this this episode has been brought to you by Black Lives Matter. (laughs) Okay, you know who's paying for this ad? Mouse motherfucking Jones and Alex Media. This is their contribution to the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, the least that they could do is is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Okay, Blue Chew, fellas, you need hard dicks out there. Okay, you need hard dicks, especially if you go into these crazy trap karaoke shows. I mean, <laughs> it's nuts out there. Like, there's so many girls, not enough dudes to satisfy all the girls. So if you're going to be one of those dudes, you might be taking home more than one girl. That's a fact. Is that a fact? God is good. God is good. So if that's the case, you got to be ready to go and you're going to do that with Blue Chew. Blue Chew... Okay, is the hardest dick you've ever had in your life. Same active ingredients inside Viagra, Cialis, but this is the chew. This is the one we're on, and this is the one that's going to get you through trap karaoke the way you need to get through it, okay? And you're going to get it for free. All you got to do is use the promo code IDIOT. The promo code IDIOTS. All you got to do is use the promo code IDIOTS, and you get it for free. Just pay $5 shipping. Bluechew.com. Promo code IDIOTS. $5 shipping. You got the best dick of your life. 
This episode has also been brought to you by Cushy Dreams, the best CBD on the motherfucking planet. They focus on the flower. The flower, the flower, the flower. They got the pre-rolls if you want to roll it already, and they got the regular flower that you can roll yourself. You can mix it in with some real weed, okay? So now you're not getting addicted to tobacco. I don't know why people are mixing tobacco and weed. It tastes worse. You get fucking cancer from it. Okay, why don't you stick with the CBD in the weed? Way better for your lungs, way better for your body, calms you down, cools you out. And also, if you don't want to smoke weed, you just want to smoke the CBD, reduce that anxiety a little bit, reduce that inflammation. Things that are better for your life, so go with the best company, and that is Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams, if you go to K-U-S-H-Y dreams.com, at checkout, you use the promo code IDIOTS, you're going to get 20% off your next order. Okay? Smoke your CBD with the promo code IDIOTS and get 20% off today. Now, let's get back to the show. Taylor, what we got? What are some stories that we got to talk about? Okay? Um, did y'all see that PETA, which I think is um, <laughs> really dumb, but PETA did a human skin launch? Oh, yeah. I saw this where they had like the bags. Yeah. They're like bags and jackets. They were like... Yeah, but isn't that... It's not actually made of human skin. It's made of like images of human skin. And what would be dope if we started wearing them? Yeah, I'd be fire. fire. That sounds fire. But even though it looks kind of trash, like if we start wearing them, it proves that we're even. Like if <laughs> if all it takes PETA to understand that we're going to keep wearing leather is if we also wear humans, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'd wear human. I wear human. But isn't that like contradictory? If you fucked a girl, you wore human. <laughs> You've been worn. <laughs> that's a fact, right? That is a fact. Yeah, no, that right. Makes sense. Why we're not few, against this? You guys have been warned. So a few guys have been warned. Right here. I don't. Th I stylistically, I don't think it's great. But like, you're not gonna hold just just fake fire. That one right there is fake. You're fire. into it. You could do that with like a black like a black hoodie or this something. One. That's fake fire. The rest of it's just dumb. I mean, that's not bad. That I thought not bad at all. I wear yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. that's not bad at all. Yeah, I'm not mad. That's at That's really this. gonna. They, yeah, they're gonna be mad once they sell out. For sure. Yeah, they got to stop hating. The PETA is just, they're just trolls. They are. Right? Like, like just get over it. We're going to fucking kill animals. We're going to eat them. We're going to use their products. Like, what's yeah. the big deal? Get a life. I want to see what in their house. I've always wondered what's <laughs> in the PETA people's house. Just polyester? House. It has to be. The whole house. Like, trash. the whole house. Nothing is from human? I mean, nothing's from animals? Yeah. Like, no, I don't believe it. Yeah, I, I don't think believe modern it. furniture they probably like because a lot of that isn't leather. They right? don't have, have plants? Like a linen couches and shit like that. I but plants, this. they're okay with eating. They don't live. They do they're, live. They're a living organism. Yeah. But Peter's okay with eating that. Yeah. You know, there, somebody had a joke. Fuck, a comic had a joke. I forget what it is. But it's like, uh, yeah, if, they, if vegetarians uh, love animals so much, why do they eat all their food? Yeah. Yeah, it's Brian John had a joke like that back is that, in the day. Was yeah. it Brian? I remember he had a joke like that back in the day. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just like... If somebody comes up to me, they're like, yo, I stopped eating meat. I feel healthier. I have more energy, that kind of shit. I'm right. like, okay, I'm cool with that. I right. don't care. Like, whatever. If you want to yeah. have your dietary shit, go for it. Like, right, my girl right, right, can't right. eat uh, dairy, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, it just fucks her whole skin up. So I'm cool with it. But the the whole thing where it becomes like your lifestyle, it's just like- It's your identity. It's, your ide it's like, you just need religion. That Like, you just, need somebody to tell yeah. you what to do. Yeah. That's really what it is. I feel like- I, I don't like, I don't trust any of those people. You don't. Like, you just- you need somebody to tell you you're doing the thing. Let me ask you this right. question. Have you ever met someone who is religious and vegetarian or vegan or these yeah. kind of things? Yeah. Vegetarian, Ooh, like everybody yeah. comes home from jail. <laughs> but that's where they get good meals. No, they five percenters and now they don't eat anything. Like, yeah, but so they get the good food. Like if you're going to get the halal food in jail. Right. Oh, you got to yeah, join course, up. Yeah, the halal or the kosher food. Yeah. It's better. But then once they come home, they really believe that shit. I'm like, bro, you only eat like this so you didn't get beat up. Like. Relax. But then they keep doing it afterwards? Yeah. Son, that's a that's a good lick. Like if I'm the religion, if I'm Islam, I'm like, yo, give the best food in jail and then get everybody on board. And then if we trust the documents, if the documents are nice, like if the right. gospel is nice, right. we just gotta get you to listen. We're reforming you, right? Boom. There. I'll sneak you in with the food, mm -hmm. hit you over 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 the head with God. Right. And once you, and if you truly believe in God, it's like, yo, once you feel this God shit, it's over. Like, you're coming with me. It uh, might work. Yeah. That's the okie doke. It's brilliant. Solid marketing. It's just yeah. like, Raheem, give it up. Raheem, give it up. <laughs> Raheem, give it up. I'm just really annoyed. It's like, come on, really? I get it. You did your time, your home now. Just, come on. That's it. Let's eat go eat it. Like, at least try chicken at home. They eat chicken. Like, you never had free world chicken. 
Yeah. These niggas never had free world chicken. Like, you don't know what it's like. Uh-huh. I stopped eating free world chicken. It's different. I knew what it was like. Uh, I'm good on it. Yeah. Y'all didn't have that shit. Like, you still institutionalized. Come home. Mm. I'm sick of these niggas. <laughs> I know a lot of Hindus obviously don't eat meat. Do you know any religious person that's a vegan? I don't think so. Because they already got one thing in their life <laughs> telling them what to do. Yeah. You don't need more than one thing Everybody in your life telling God, you what to you do. You might just not call it God. Ooh. Yeah. Whatever that thing that's keeping you morally Yo, low on key. Politics, AOC, Trump, that's your God. I'll be honest with you. Animals, whatever. People that got a wife ain't that religious. Why is that? I'm with, I'm here for this. Let me hear this. I'm here you got this. someone telling you what to do. <laughs> like you got someone breaking down the rules. But, but this you is what I got to abide by. But if you're smart, you use God to flip it. Yeah, because you can't check your wife. That, you God checks your wife. Yeah. Don't talk to me like that. Exactly. You like yo, God would not want you talking. Yeah, about where that. in the Bible it says you should emasculate me. <laughs> oh, you're not giving that pussy. Where's that in the Bible? Yeah. I mean, not tonight. The, the the Bible never said that. Never said that once. Read Nowhere up. in the Bible does it say you're not, not in the mood. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not there. Yeah, it's not in any of the texts. Yeah, none, none of them. them. Mood? <laughs> what do you mean? You got saliva? <laughs> We're talking about moods here. Why we got to be in the mood? Why we need music? We don't need any of those things. That's extra. That's added bonus. Why are we adding all these things and complicating let me, let, me, let me ask you this. As somebody that's about to get married. I'm almost married. Are you scared? At all. Like, we make the jokes. We, we've we been yes. cracking the jokes for years. Yeah. But there comes a point where it's like, whoa, I'm about to have to, like, live with this person as my person forever. Is there any part where the jokes now hit a little different because you're like, eh. No. Yeah, I didn't feel no, that. No, I don't, me, I me don't feel it. No, no, no. But I also have, like, I think a different outlook on, on marriage. Okay. Which is, like... I come from a, a very fortunate where, like, my parents are still together. Yes. And, uh, uh, you don't have to look at me when you said that either. Like, I my want, parents are still I want you my to parents know. are still together as well. I want you to know. <laughs> my parents are still together. Okay. <laughs> no. And then look at that cause you look at me like, I come from very fortunate. <laughs> no, no. My parents are still together. Isn't that all, so all, all three of our parents yeah. are still together. Yeah. How, how, well, technically, is that? technically, I have a stepfather, but he's been this since I was six years. Since yeah. I was six, so I've always had a father. It lasted. Yeah. It, if it lasted, it lasted. So, yeah. yeah. All three of us. Parents. Isn't that crazy? I think. Yeah, I don't feel like it's different. You don't feel any different? I like it better, to be honest. It's you like just, married life better? Yeah, there's no uncertainty. Listen, I'm going to be gone a lot. We just got to make it work. Whatever the issue is, we got to make it work. Yeah. There's no like exit strategy for either one of us. Once I was ready to be married, right. I was married. I think but you might once have been I was ready to be mad, if, I was, okay. If you were in a situation where, like, for whatever reason, you guys were beefing a lot and you've tried everything you could do to reconcile and, like, you know, you thought the environment was fucked up with the kids, yeah. would you do the right thing? Well, whatever the right thing is for you? Yeah, I guess I have a different mindset on it. Like, yeah, I never want to say we will never because it's, you know, that's like an arrogant thing for me to say. But the thing that made me be like, OK, this is my wife and this is why is when we had problems, we were both willing to do the work to get yeah. through whatever. We're both going to therapy on our own. If we have to do couples, we'll do couples, whatever like that. We worked through so much shit early on because we both came from not the best. So it's like, all right, well, now we know we're willing to overcome whatever. That's my wife. And that's what I was saying. Once I was like, OK, this is my wife. I'm going to propose to her. Mindset was my already. mindset was I'm married. Yeah. And now there's like that's now we're what, actually I think that's married. what it is. I mean, I got I was married when I proposed. Yeah. Okay. I think for men, yeah. once, I think like, that's what it is. I, think I always say that. It's like once I made that decision that I'm marrying exactly. you, then that's it. It's and I think typically, and I can only speak from like the the ones I've seen. I mean, I was super young when I got married. So I was super young. I was right out the literally right out the military mm. and got married. So it wasn't that so I don't even think I I didn't know who I was. So yeah. from I'm speaking from it like at this point. And seeing the people get married married around me, a lot of niggas are getting are proposing and then using that space in between the proposal to the marriage to like exercise whatever demons are left or or like get in that. So where you guys say, ah. I said I'm ready to be married, then I'm married. Yeah. I think we're using it saying, I think I'm ready to get married. I proposed. She said, yes. Now I'm going to get ready to get married. So fidelity starts at marriage. For some people. For some people. And that's the hesitation. Yes. Whereas for us, fidelity started when, when we you were, were like, ready. yo, we're, we're, we're boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. That's fidelity for me. Yes. We're boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then marriage is just this thing that girls want. 
Mm. Like to me, I'll be honest, I've told my girl, like, I don't need the government to know that I love you. Like, uh, one, I, I love I, you. I like, agree. I'm doing this because you value this thing. And I'm, I'm sure there's, there's not only security in it, but there's also like uh, a culture that she was brought up in. She's seen movies since she was a kid, TV shows yeah. constantly. You want to be the fairy? You want to give it a fairy tale? She wants. Yeah. yeah. Of so I'm like, all right, let's go. Whatever. Like we're doing this together. It's fine. But I've told her all the time, like me and you going in front of a judge you don't need and that. saying I love you, like that means yeah. nothing to me. It, zero. Like it, it is actually stupid. Yeah. It's stupid that mm -hmm. I need to tell. It's not Cuomo, but whoever this governor now, like I need to be like, hey, yeah. I'm good. I love my wife, and I'd then be, she goes, I'd be a little okay. worried if Cuomo it's, still it's, yeah. <laughs> Actually, he might be. He might be on your side. Are you sure? <laughs> let, let me let yeah, me let take me see. Let me see. <laughs> I don't think it's about the love. Well, it's also Cuomo. stupid for us financially. Exactly. That's where it's stupid yeah. to us because it's like it, this is my money. I'm giving up. Right. Yeah. But essentially, once you say... It's like we're opening a business and I'm putting up all the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that yeah. shit folds, I walk away half as rich, you walk away twice as rich. <laughs> yeah. And that's the <laughs> fucked up thing is that like... Because I was going through this even with my girl with the prenup shit is like if I... So you guys did get a prenup? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I said we wouldn't get a prenup. And she so, wanted, she wanted no, to like prove that, it. I just said I wouldn't do it. Okay, we're gonna get you. a post nup, but that she didn't see that coming. <laughs> so basically, you <laughs> should have thought about it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but uh, the fucked up thing about a prenup is, all jokes aside, the fucked up thing about prenup is, is that you gotta look at your girl, and you gotta be like, here's this piece of paper that says I think you'll never be more successful than me. Because if you thought that she would be, <laughs> you would never give yeah. her the paper. Yeah. The paper says, hey, here's there's a limit how much each of us can get from one another right. because I got so much. Uh, look at progressive Andy. I'm just saying. So it's a fucked up. Now, my girl's in business school and shit. She got money to make. Right, right. right? So it's like, that's a, tip, a difficult thing. If my girl was just like, yo, I just want kids. That's it. I don't want to work. I'm good. You hold it down, which is also great. I support that 100%. And I, I'm down with women who want to do that. I'm never going to fucking shit on a woman who wants to raise a family. Like, that's a full time job. Especially when I want job. a family. Wait, especially when I want a family, <laughs> right. 100%. But it is a trickier thing. It's not as easy as just going, hey, I got some money. Here's a prenup. Because it's for future money, too. Mm. Right? Yeah. And these girls, at, as they should right now, are entering the workforce like, yo, I'm about to be breaded up, too. And who they're the running fuck are it you? Up. Yeah. yeah. So I got to look at them and be like, yeah, but you got a ceiling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. No, bitch, you fucked this up. I'm coming yeah. up. And, and here's the thing. If we were like, I'm, oh, I'm older than my girl. You're older than your girl. So if we were the same age, that's easy. I could be like, yo, you had a shot, shorty. Like, <laughs> you ain't make it. You know what I mean? Like, like, what you want me to say? Like, you're 40. Like, you know, where, yeah. where the millions at? But if... <laughs> But they, but our girls are younger. They got time. Right. Yeah. They got time like we got time. Mm. I wasn't making money at her I age. I was fucking broke at her age. Exactly. Mm. So I can't even, I can't even say, yo, well, I had it when I was your, yeah. I had nothing. I right. had what you got when right. you were you, right. when I was you. Ma less because she didn't have, you didn't have a you. hundred percent. But even more than lack of faith in her, if I, I would look, we didn't get a prenup because my girl was with me when I was broke as fuck. So I couldn't really justify we asked for one. Yeah. But uh, I thought You could have, but you, you, it would not go. You didn't want to win. Want to win. We always try to make ourselves a hero. Like she was with me from the beginning. Like, I don't mean shit. So, oh. JP Morgan, you know JP Morgan. Oh, I didn't say I, this is what I decided in my heart. I said I couldn't <laughs> justifiably <laughs> ask for one. Run that sentence back and you'll see I didn't have a good leverage point. I wanted to. Yeah, my leverage was limited. She was with me when I was fucking homeless. Right, right, so right. What can right, I say to you right, leverage wise? Right. So apparently the JP Morgan, like, uh, you know, the, the bank, obviously. Yeah. Apparently, I think it's him. I might be fucking it up. It might be someone else. But uh, apparently he made his wife sign a prenup when he uh, was in debt. Like he Fire, had, or, or he had like a hundred dollars to his name or some shit, but I mean, he just knew what he was gonna be. I bet he planned that out. I bet he's yeah, like, he I'm gonna go broke, he have did. her sign the prenup, like this is dummy, and then I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. come and on then turn it up. Up. <laughs> turn it up. He got that shit framed next to the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> just two, two things in the living room, two most important things in my life. <laughs> but you were saying, I to me, I look at it like I just in my mind, I I think I said to her on our second date or something, I was like, however long this goes, I want you to work as hard as you want. Make as much money as you want and just know I will kill myself trying to make more. 
<laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. it's going to be. And then yeah. you can think that's sexist or whatever. I think I'm just competitive. Yeah. I don't think more than everybody around me. Right. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. to me, I would look at a prenup like, I want you to make as much as possible. I'm going to make more. Right. But not right. because you're not talented, just because that's my competitiveness. Yeah. I like that. It's not about your lack of anything. It's about me and what I think I will do. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's a, like a, a, a little baked in. I don't even want to call it sexism as much as I want to call it like gender roles. Gender roles, yeah. You know, like where you feel like you got to be the one providing. Yes. Like, <laughs> isn't that fucked up? So that was the trade off. Hey, so look. We had all the control. Like, in order to pass laws, you need people in government to change the law, right? Yes. And it was all men. That's where the feminist movement comes from. The feminist movement comes with, was birthed out of women, white women wanting to fight because. Bro, I'm we got I'm, we got our makes rights. more sense in the I'm history of the world. I'm crying laughing right now cuz literally it's white women going you let black people have <laughs> rights before us. That's <laughs> literally what happened. Son, That's literally what I'm happened. I'm crying right now. And, and then, Yo, and then these bitches got the fucking nerve oh, yeah. to leave us alone. The white cis men Oh, yeah. they jumped. Oh, they jumped. Oh, the oh, yeah. they jumped off. They jumped off. Y'all being white. They're the worst. I've been saying this. I, for days. White women. Oh, sorry. I said it the first time I was on flagrant. White women been the worst. We vibed on this. White women been the worst. Yo. Well, well, well. So here's something I realized that was really interesting. It's like, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to like do a bit about it. So I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm doing uh, yeah, jokes. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing, of course, of course. There's nothing, yeah. nothing funny about it. But I'm, I'm trying to work about like the, the, the thought of it. Right? Is this like, have you noticed like? who the bad guy is has been getting more and more specific. Like, it used to just be like, white people are bad, right? Mm -hmm. And then it became like, actually, it's just white men that are bad. Right. And then white gay dudes were like, but that ain't us. And then it's like, okay, straight, cis, het, <laughs> white men. And I'm like- and Do you know who's writing it all? I'm like, y'all trying to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> to be accountable for it all. You know who's right? <laughs> it's it's all you, my fault. And do you know who's writing all Ooh. this? A white woman. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Motherfuckers. I like being a white woman at that. God damn. That kind of looks like you. This dress like you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. It got my haircut, your and outfit. And, she, and she's writing the shit out of it. Son of a bitch. And you better not question My that. haircut, your outfit, our kinds of titties. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they wish. Like we got a whole lesbian on these three sofas <laughs> <laughs> with our four powers combined. Oh, shit. We get a tail. Yeah, we got <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no, shit. that's crazy. <laughs> oh, but it, that is the sick. That is the sick part of it. But have y'all noticed that shit? Like, no, like, uh, you're a thousand percent right. Dead ass. Like, I, I was. I've been thinking about this shit. I'm like. Cause I see all these white people doing that 23 and me shit, and I'm just like, oh, you trying to find a way out? <laughs> this is your little- I am six percent yes, Congolese. They do this. Be and and they find a way where it's not they're they're no longer accountable. Oh, I'm bi or I'm non-binary. They like do these this like So I don't see it for white people as a whole, right? I just I want to let y'all, I want all the smoke. I don't see it for white people as a whole. But one thing I will always give credit to white men. Mm -hmm. Is you never see whenever it's smoke, they're just standing in it. Oh, racist! It's, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was gonna go somewhere else. With that shit. It's a joke. He like, didn't even apologize. No, like they're not apologizing oh, for it. Never. I res I can always respect that. Yeah. I always respect somebody because. That's at the, I think that's just as a man that's in our DNA. Like if you're a stand up guy, no matter your race, that's Yo, in your DNA. Yeah. What about this? What about this agreement? If you tap out of the accountability, mm -hmm. you don't get any of the credit. No, because that if you tap, even if you don't get the credit, you'll get the credit just based off the race alone. Yeah, yeah. you're going to get the credit in life. Exactly. Like, you're going to get the credit in life. You're going to be able to just kind of, like, uh, operate in life with the uh, the privilege of exactly. being a white dude, like, walk around a store, not be followed, et cetera. But, like, if we're really going to chop it up and, like, remove people from the accountability of, of like, the shitty things mm -hmm. white people have done, shouldn't we also give credit to the good things white people have done, even though I had nothing to do with those either? Like, I got nothing to do with the bad shit, even though I benefit from it. Right. I had nothing to do with the good shit, even, even though, though I benefit, benefit from, from it. it. Yep. So I want the credit from the good. You mm. know what I mean? Like, 
I think when everybody non-white logs on to Wi-Fi, <laughs> is that a white guy? I assume it's white fi <laughs> is, there, is that a thing? Actually, I don't know. It could be black. I don't know. It could be it black. Could be I, don't know. I got no fucking clue. I think I, I like that thought process, but the only way that works is kind of like what we've been saying since the beginning of all these conversations is you would have to denounce the privilege. A hundred percent. You would have to denounce the privilege. Or or acknowledge it. Like no, it doesn't acknowledge full it. acknowledgement. Because I can't. I used to think that made sense until you've seen it in practicality. And then, like, but how do you denounce the privilege? You can't speaking? take part in it. Like, you have to denounce. What does that uh, mean? Excuse me, Korean man. Please follow me around your store. Yes, I have to ask the Korean guy to follow me around the store. Or put yourself in that marker. Or you got to help. You got to stand right there and call him out when he's doing it. But you can't. To so somebody else. Exactly. But you can't stand. You like. I used to think it was one thing to acknowledge it, right? Yeah. And then you just seen white people. Yeah, yeah, nothing happens. Acknowledging, it's like, annoying. I, I can't believe yeah. I can live anywhere I want. Oh, I want to live right there, not near the neighbors. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to acknowledge it. I, I, I'm just saying I'm willing to take all the smoke for it, but then I, I'm fine with the credit. If you're going to put mm -hmm. all the fuck shit on me. Well, that's what I think. I, I don't think so. The, sick the part, only real but, easy way to do it is just it's white privilege. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when but a gay guy's a like, no, level. I'm gay, so I've been held back. Yeah, but you could also not be gay like for a little bit. when you walk in the store, like you don't got to be gay about it. <laughs> no, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't got to do that shit where you fall back I real think, delicately. So if, but it doesn't hurt. You know that dance that they do? <laughs> that shit is like unbelievable. That? Where, no, they just, where they just drop. No, that's not the white ones. I don't think the white ones have enough. Uh, white and black gay, there's a lot of mix. No, there's not. No, I don't yes, know. Yes, there, there, there is. There's, no, there's, no, no, no. Yes, there's there black is. gays. I don't think white dudes. White gays got rhythm like that? Not a lick. Bro, I'm no. telling you, dogs. White they and black have, gay. They just have the white male privilege. Yes, they do have white male white privilege. White gay dudes are just black women without rhythm. Like their whole identity is stolen from just black absolutely. women. So these I like white that, gay yeah. dudes can dance too. Yes, queen. Which, it's just like, you. That, come on, that bro. Fucking, that, that, guy come on. On, that guy on Peloton. I haven't been that mad at a white gay man in a very long time. Because <laughs> well, he pisses guy, me no. off. Well, at, I know, I so there's this guy mean. on Peloton yeah. and he's like, it, like he, one of the videos went viral of him like talking about like brunch. Yeah. But it's literally a bit that every black woman has talked about on black Twitter for the last 10 years. Which is? It's just like, you know, we hate or they hate when you split the bill. Like don't uh, don't try and account don't try and account for what you did. We all sat here. We all ate. We had yeah, brunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so black women are very much don't don't be that oh, bitch. Oh, don't be don't pay for just what you ordered. It, is what we, you're it, six to. of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, now yeah, yeah. he's on the Peloton. Yeah. He's like, come on, we're riding and we're at brunch. And you brought the home girl that hates uh that that hates splitting the bill. And it's like, come on, bro. What are y'all doing right now? And they just kept retweeting. I'm like, that's. That's literally They've been sliding by on this for a while, I and, think. And it's like, I don't I hate that part. Because they say every white gay man says, Oh, there's a black, there's a black woman trapped inside of me. <laughs> and then you start treating black women like shit. And they start treating black men like shit. I just think yeah. if we're gonna so, call out appropriation at every turn. Every single turn. I'm with it. I think there's a lot of straight like, I don't gay think white straight, dudes act like stereotypical I don't think black straight, women. I don't think cis hetero straight white men oh my God, are I can't the believe biggest. You just said that. I just, I'm just saying. I don't He's think they're to the defend you. Let no, him I'm not trying. Yeah, I'm trying to defend you. Go yeah, with it. I know, but I don't think they're the most crazy. dangerous of the yeah, white yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's white women. Yes, agreed. Gay white men probably agree. Gay white women probably agree. Then kiss at white men. I think they just do the dirty work, and the in in a lot of them stand next to Trump, and a lot of them are just able, just from history, you're okay. able to point at and say. So let's make wrong. let's play devil's advocate for the gays. Okay. Um, the white ones. Yeah, sure. Okay. Or, or, or black gays as, as well. well. No, they're separate, two separate Of course, of course, they're separate experiences. But at the same time, like, how you act, who you are, the person you become is influenced by the person, the people you admire growing up. Okay. Right? And it's okay. like, there's a reason why, like, we all grew up in New York and mm -hmm. we speak a certain way. And gay people who grew up in New York, went to school with us, had the same exact upbringing as us, have a different accent. Okay. Right. We're familiar with the gay accent. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if this persists no matter where you go in the world, but it is a choice, just like it's a choice for us. Like when I speak Spanish, I speak it with a specific the accent. Spanish That's a accent. choice. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm I'm specifically using the accent where I learned it. You from. think about that? Like when you do it, like when for example, I think we all do it. like when we go downstairs and we go to the, the, the bodega, we go to the corner store. hundred percent. Yo, pop. Yep. Yo, pop. Yeah. Mira, papa. Yep. hundred percent. You think about it? 
for me, if I'm talking to different people, it changes. Like if I'm speaking that, to people from Spain, my accent, I learned Spanish in Spain. Oh, right, 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 so right. my accent's a little bit more Spanish there. But then when I was in Mexico, all my Mexican slang starts coming up because mm -hmm. most of the time I spoke Spanish was with Mexicans. Gotcha. So like, who we are starts mm -hmm. to, you know, even watching my mom. My mom's from Scotland. When she's speaking to me, like barely notice her accent. When she speaks to her family, all Heavy. of a sudden starts coming up. Right. Gets thicker, et cetera. So we're going to have that. So what if these young white gay kids, young, young white, black gay kids, mm -hmm. young Hispanic gay kids are all admiring the same figures, right? And they happen okay. to be black women. Okay. And even at a young age, they're like, they might not even know they're gay, but they're like, I just know that that, that is beautiful. That is amazing. That is incredible. And what if they start to cultivate their personality around that? In the same way, when we were younger, we saw Will Smith and we're like, yo, that guy's so hilarious. I'm going to cultivate my mm -hmm, personality mm -hmm. around that. Or I want all the Jordans. I want all the, or, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah, go. I was, that's what I think what people don't want on like the, what people don't realize is appropriation to a large degree is admiration. Yes. I think that's at the core of it. Yes. That's yes. at the core. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with appropriation. I don't personally think it's the biggest deal all the time. There's, I guess, exceptions. Yeah. But right. generally, I don't have a problem with appropriation. But if we're in a culture, we're going to call it appropriation at every turn. We can't just let white gay dudes slide on this entire thing because, oh, they're, they're well, I homosexual. think that's exactly what they want to slide on the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, they're, they're homosexual, so I can't say anything I think, about them. I if think, we're calling that appropriation, yeah, appropriate. I think there's two ways to look at it. It's like, uh, one, I 100% agree. And I think you have good perspective on this because there are parts of your culture that are appropriated all the time in your community for, at least as far as I've seen, is is accepting of it. And I have the self-awareness to know. yoga and shit. Yoga. You know what I mean? It's like- Namaste. You mispronounce it every time. Drives me fucking nuts. How do you say it? Namaste. But Namaste. Okay. at the end of the day, I also have the self-awareness to know there was no Indian identity for me growing up. And the white kids in my suburb right. were a few of them were pretty quick to tell me I, you're, I'm not them. So I picked up a lot of shit from black culture because I was like, well, if I'm not white, right. Right. I must be this other thing. So yes. I picked up things there. So I've appropriated. That's, that's, we okay. have all appropriated. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with it, generally speaking. But if we are in this accountability of appropriation culture, that's where I get annoyed. So I well, think I think that. so real quick, I think a couple things happen, right, where it's like. I think there's like a true feeling, uh, I would imagine, of um, displeasure and anger that like a group that could make you feel lesser than or remove access from certain things would take something that is made cool by you mm -hmm. and then monetize it and make money of it. So there's a real frustration. It's like, hold on, I thought we weren't good enough. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, not only are you doing our shit, but like you making money off it. That's and crazy. That's the problem. And that's when yes. admiration like becomes Kardashians. appropriation. Yeah. yeah. So that's so when when you say you don't have a problem with appropriation, I think you don't have a problem with admiration. Yeah. Appropriation is when somebody dons it and wears and it's it ours. and then it's it's this yeah. is us this is especially we when they're monetizing, monetizing. especially when you're monetizing especially now, i will say this also there's a, like a third version where it's like appropriation has been used as like a tool like a weapon almost yes where it's like oh there's a group of people we don't like the most convenient way to call them out or take them down is appropriation because we cannot exist in this world in america without appropriating something bro. yeah like literally, that's the thing. Yeah, you like, talk. The music industry is. You wearing a polo sport hat? You never played polo. Never in my life. Don't even know what sport that. You wearing overalls. You never been on a farm. I have. Not. Where? Upstate. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> no, but you understand. So it's like it can become a weapon where it's like, all right, I hate the Kardashians. Fuck them. You see how they're doing this shit. Blah blah blah. Appropriate. Get it. Get rid of them. Let's just let's use this as a way to like criticize this group. Of Fifty people. did it. Fifty did it to probably the best. What Fifty you, comes you, out. He has a problem with Ja Rule. Fifty gets shot. Comes in the industry. Attacks Ja Rule. And then does the same exact thing. What do he do? Makes the same melodic songs, the the same. Oh, Fifth, if you yeah, listen to what Fifty was criticizing Ja Rule for in those early G Unit radio mixtapes, it was, oh, you're singing, oh, you're not really rapping, you're doing, uh, you you're doing these pop records, and then Fifty comes out with in the club, goes candy diamond, shop. and then Candy Shop, twenty one questions. It's his second single. Oh wow! It's like, wait, you got us to hate Ja Rule. And we stopped liking him. <laughs> and and now you became he's genius. That motherfucker's a genius, bro. Yeah. It's like that's 
And that, right, we like that part, but yeah. when we look at it as a bigger part, it's that's appropriation. Yes. That's what's been going on for so um, long. And, that, and so the only problem is when we call it out and somebody says, I'm not appropriating while still appropriating. Yeah. That's when it becomes a problem. That's the thing that none of us want to admit, though, is that we all appropriate. And in order for us to exist, we all got to appropriate something. Now, it it's it's a little different when you're not the majority because you're forced to do certain things because like the culture has been established. Right. Right. So if like I live in India and I start wearing Indian outfits and shit, yeah, I guess I'm appropriating, but like you're motherfucker, I'm, in. I'm trying to fit well, you're in. Bro. You're, like, assimilating. Yeah. you're not appropriating. That's a good yeah, you're, yeah. Only, you're only appropriating Ooh. if somebody looks at you and says, Oh, Schultz, that's fire. <laughs> oh, it is? Yeah, it's my yeah, shit. It's, it's the Schultz. It's yeah. okay, so there's admiration, mm -hmm. assimilation. Mm -hmm. And appropriation. And, and I think we're all in the middle. I think, to be honest, we all, for the most part, we all live in the middle where we have to assimilate. Like you said, you had to assimilate closer to the black experience when you, where you were growing up. Yeah. We're New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. uh, urban New York, you got to kind of assimilate. You're going to assimilate more or less to the blacker side of things. Yes. It becomes appropriation but where if somebody found you yeah. and you're like, Shows, where do you get that style of comedy? Came out with it, you know. Yeah, yeah all by myself. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no influences. But but that's the crazy thing about growing up in New York because it's like, it was so weird. Like, and maybe this is just the pull and the power of of Black American culture, mm -hmm. where it's just like everybody was was dragged in that direction. Yeah, and like we were influenced in other directions too. Like Italian culture has a strong Huge. hold on, especially within like the. Honestly, New York culture is really this battle between like black Italian and black and, black and, black and like almost a little like Irish or whatever like that. But like, where would the Irish come from? I think I'm just not well versed in Irish culture. I think Irish Italian culture. and Irish culture is a lot of times like we because they oh, were the two like union, oh, the, the union, work, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. bar, of, bar yeah. fight, bar heavy. Okay, okay, yeah, oh, got you, got you. So it's like a lot of those stereotypes that we just automatically attribute to Italian are also Some Irish, Irish, but the yeah. communities were kind of like. Mixed. Uh, I wouldn't even say mixed, but like similar in in the way that they developed. They they were the white people that struggled, created something. It's always the people that struggle to create the cool shit, right? Because they can't just they buy have no expensive choice. things. Yeah, you have no choice. Yeah, yeah. I need swag. I don't have diamonds. You know what I mean? Like if I could just buy the expensive thing that gives me value, yeah. I would just buy it. But I don't have the money for that, so I got to make Converse cool. I got to make Dickies cool, right? That's like a fact. I got to make Tim's the shit. I got to make my work uniform the thing. The thing. Yeah. I always thought about that, like growing up, when I couldn't get the Carhartt, I used to think like, why the fuck we want Carhartt anyway? Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. shit you be wearing. That's what you talk to me and be wearing. Yeah, yeah. But now I love my car. I'd be like, exactly. now when I finally got what it, I was like, I, man, like, I wear cars. I was so yeah. happy when I got my car. I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. 100%, 100%. I look just like the DSNY workers. <laughs> 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 so that's so I guess that's but, what yeah, it is. I think we but all live that, in that assimilation part. And you for see the most everybody part. gravitate towards it and we don't notice it in the moment because we're like, oh yeah, this is just what it is to be in New York and like mm -hmm. this is how we talk. Like this is how the Asian kids talk mm -hmm. and this is how the Spanish kids talk, this is how the black kids talk, this is how the white kids talk mm -hmm. that that went to like public school more. Mm -hmm. I, I think went the to private school, school private kids school were a little kids, more of move. Complete different yeah, yeah. Yeah, experience. Because they never got the experience. They, they were never be, going to school because the experience happens in school. I yeah. think people tend to forget that. The experience happens when you're around your peers. And if we're all poor, middle class, we're all sharing ex an experience. Yeah, yeah, you might go to a better house. You might go home to a better house. Yeah. But when we're at school and we're walking to school, that's when we're experiencing yeah. all this shit together. So the kids going to private school, yeah, you're having a different experience. Yeah. White, black, uh, you're having a different experience and you're like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, Tommy yeah. went to the Hamptons this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I'm at Empire, yeah. when I'm going, when I'm hopping on the train to go to Empire in Brooklyn, when I'm 15, 16, they like, oh, okay, you from where? I don't know where Long Island, but you cool. Yeah, yeah. Because we match. Yeah. And it never felt like I'm wearing it. That's yeah. where... Well, because you because you grow up with it. It's like learning a language. Mm -hmm. It's like you learn what sneakers are cool because your friends got some shit. And then everybody's like, oh, those are fire. Oh, you get Air Max this. I guess Air Max are cool. I'm going to start looking at Air Max. And that's just how you learn it by osmosis. Right. And that's, I guess, the importance of environment. Like we always talk about like. Right there. Yeah, yeah. We always talk about like inclusion and stuff in terms of like film and movies. And that is very important seeing something that you could be that you didn't know you had access to. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Which like, is why, you know, rest in peace, that's why Virgil was so big. Yo, Virgil, but like, you know, the, the corny one or the hacky one, maybe say Jeremy Lin, but like, that's real. Like, there's an Asian kid that's gonna end up in the NBA because they saw Jeremy Dude, Lin. Russell Peters made comedy possible for Indians. 
Mm. We knew it was possible, but we didn't know until gotcha. we saw him. Hell yeah. And like, yo, even as a white dude, like, I remember when Jason Williams was playing, you know, like yeah. the white, cho- white chocolate. Was, bro, it's like, it was really cool to see a white dude play ball like how I wanted to play ball. Mm-hmm. Like, besides that, it's Dirk Nowitzki. And anytime I'm hooping, the dude's like, oh, give it to Dirk. Dirk. And I can't even shoot. <laughs> yeah. I'm crossing people up, going to the basket, but they got no other white reference. Right, yeah. right. Calling me the old lanky dude, right? right? Do you think uh, Jokic is that right now? Nah, because I don't think kids want to hoop. Nobody, like, nobody, nobody wants to be big. That. Exactly, but you want to. So it was like. But you want to you want to be uh, Luca. Luca. Yeah. You want to be Luca. Luca. Luca exactly. Yeah. So like having that representation is important, but what's also important is like having that representation in your friend group as a young age. Because mm-hmm. like then the things you learn, the, the words you learn, mm-hmm. like it just becomes so second nature. Like that's almost like when you see these. And that's the crazy thing about the Internet is like you see these white kids in the suburbs like doing dances, wearing clothes, and using vocabulary that they would have no access Just to without the internet. Without the internet. Yeah. Like and that's when it becomes the problem. Because okay, now go, you take now it they don't from, even know that it's bad. You, what you don't know it's bad. You don't know how to reference you don't know how to have any reverence for it. You don't know where it's from. You don't know where it's from. So now you look at this kid and you're like, sure, the commerce side, all right, he bought all the sneakers. But now because you bought all the sneakers, you just made it harder on somebody else. Hmm. You didn't, nobody thinks about that. Everybody thinks, oh, it's the sneaker game. You got, and they're not the, even thinking the about. They're game. innocently just buying the sneakers because they think it's cool. And now you take them all, and now the poor person who, or not the poor person, let's say, because uh, I don't want to offend the anybody. community. The, the community made was the made. The sneaker cool, was made. Can't for, access the sneakers. Can't access the sneaker. The, yeah. the 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 person who was inspired and came from that community and said, "I'm going to make something that 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 has reverence from where I come from." Those people that live there can't get to it yeah. because you took it over there. That's the bigger view of what appropriation and, looks and like. And then that's the tricky thing is like, how do you solve that? Because you don't want to say- Bring crack back. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to put it in another neighborhood. They did that. <laughs> yeah, they did you got to put it in- you got, Oh, yeah. You got to put it in. They did it with fentanyl and shit. Are black people happy about meth? Some yeah, payback, yeah, very happy. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm so glad. And I'm so glad you asked me. I feel so well versed to to answer that question. I've been waiting to answer that question. Okay, we're very happy. It is. We're very, in a all comic those, sense. All these TV shows coming out with uh, about the opioid crisis. We're loving it. <laughs> we're loving it. <laughs> we're loving it. Cause we love the wire. Yeah. Oh, but it was too. It was just a little bit triggering. It was too close. No, it's nobody. We don't know anybody locked up for meth. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody. We don't know nobody locked up for meth, so it's, I, it doesn't bother so me. Now I you will, see how much fun white people had in the eighties. No. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I will say this though. No, because they just find other reasons to lock us up now. Okay, That's, fair enough. Are you protesting us killing you? <laughs> yeah, you're going to jail. <laughs> Into you're going to jail. jail. Get him. Get him out of here. Uh, Miles won't bail you out, but you'll be there. Taylor yeah. got five hundred. Taylor got, Taylor got five on it. On it. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, the meth thing is interesting. The meth thing is interesting because, like, the punishment adds up. What do you mean? Or, like, okay. So, meth is just... What is meth, essentially? It's like, uh, uh, it's like Adderall or whatever like that. It's like Adderall, but, like, a crazier version of it. I don't know. It's an I don't know what's, well, I don't know what it's specifically. I know it's an opiate. Yeah. It's Speed? considered part of the oh, opiate I don't think, crisis. I don't, I don't think meth is an opiate. I think it's an amphetamine. Yeah, I think it's an I think it's, it's an like amphetamine. Speed. Speed? Yeah, yeah. So okay. meth is speed. But I think what happens is like the punish. You know how the punishment for crack was way worse than the punishment for coke, even though it was the same shit. Once and you, you were like, it, yeah, exactly. But you're like, yo, that's super racist. It's the same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. The Rockefeller laws. Boom. Mm-hmm. So I think the same thing goes with meth. Like the meth, the punishment for meth is way worse. Is way worse. Then the punishment would be for like for illegally rather, having amphetamine. the other fi- another kind of amphetamine, which is good because it's consistent. Because right. I think the punishment is based more on the crime that they see around the, the drug distribution, and well, also distribution. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what was also happening with crack. They're like, oh shit, there's this crime that's going on. Now it's completely fucked up. It's racist, absolutely. Right, right. But these rich people could do coke, and then when they start to get in a problem, they're like, oh, I'm just going to rehab for a little bit, clean my shit out. And with crack, it was like, ain't no fucking rehab in Utah for a couple months. Mm-hmm. It's no, I'm addicted to and it. And maybe it's proportion to the addictiveness of the drug. Like crack, uh, you're so fucking addicted. Mm-hmm. From what we were taught, so your it's a life is over with one puff. Coke. Right. They tell you your life is over with one puff, but you start to get a little bit older. You're like, I haven't, I don't know a lot of functioning crackheads. I know a lot of functioning cokeheads. Bro, it's crazy. Yo, these kids, I coke think, is a I, party drug now, yo. Yeah. But I thought it always was. In the 80s, but not with kids. It was like I fucking stock yeah, bro- I stock brokers it, or whatever. There was okay. still like, at least when I went to school, there was a little stigma to it. Like motherfuckers were like, I don't know, they could do it, but at the same time. 
it, it would be like, oh, you're doing coke. I never heard anybody doing coke in my suburban high school, soft high school. Oh, I meant they college. Were doing, so college, I, so college, going to school in Long Island, they were doing coke. Really? They were doing coke and they were doing, and drinking. They, they like, the kids was drinking when right. we were in like sixth, seventh grade. By the time we hit high school, they were doing coke. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't know what the fuck a bump was. And I'm like, what niggas doing? When I heard bump, I thought they were talking about wrestling moves. But that's what you call <laughs> yeah. a wrestling move, like taking yeah. a bump. Yeah. So I heard a kid say like, oh, taking a bump. I said, oh, we wrestling? <laughs> like, nah, I got so Nah, y'all, y'all out your fucking mind. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my side of the neighborhood. Y'all bugging over yeah, here. Yeah, you don't even drink. Nah, I don't drink and do nothing. Oh, fall. Jesus. Yeah, nah. Yo, you got to run. I know yeah. you said you got to be out. Yeah. So my you got to get to that job you took from me? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> let's break. Let's do an ad. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I need to talk to you about Upstart. Are you carrying a credit card balance month after month? You're not the only one. High interest rates make it hard to pay off your debt, but Upstart can help you, okay? Join the thousands of happy borrowers who made that final payment. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Taylor, what else do we have to know about Upstart? You see, the thing is... Whether you're paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, okay? They're looking at your income and employment history as well. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash idiots. That's Upstart. Dot com slash idiots. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash idiots. And this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. You'll find out what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging and publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or anything you can dream of. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. And get to know your audience with their analytics tools those include insights on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography, and more. Let me tell you something. It's so simple. Okay. You can start with the design templates and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. All websites are optimized for mobile. Your site looks great on any device. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. These SEO tools are paramount. So head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10%. Off your first purchase of a website or domain, that's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, God, Mouse. y'all got a lot of edge, man. No, we Woo! out here, boy. We out here. Woo! Uh, have we solved uh, racism in America? You didn't even do no church announcements. Oh, shit. We got church announcements. <laughs> You're right. Hey, we got to do some church announcements. Uh, Mouse, church announcements. Uh, church announcements. Church announcements. God Next Door podcast each and every Monday. With my uh, brothers, Fly Rye and Mac Wiles, each and every Monday, wherever you listen to your podcast, um, the What Hip Hop Question Legends and Lists. Love it. On the Black Effect Podcast Network, myself and Alice Simone, we are coming back. Love it. Um, In the new year. So shout out to that. Shout out to Charlemagne the God. Shout out to Unk. Shout out to Dolly, that whole team. Um, And the Trap Karaoke. TrapKaraoke.com. Yes. Get your tickets. We are still going. We got Atlanta left. Delaware. What Atlanta, is your favorite Delaware. place to perform? Oh, like, what city did you enjoy the show the most? Chicago. Really? Chicago is so rough. So to watch them embrace me yeah. is one. I go into these cities, not to like brag again, but like I go into these cities by myself. Yeah. Like, I mean, you might see me with my brother if it's like a rough city or if it's some street shit where it's like, I just cover me. But other than that, I go in these cities by myself, I'm yeah. in and out. So it's just me on stage and I'm in front of a whole bunch of people that y'all live here. <laughs> y'all know each other. Y'all don't know me. Yeah. So to have such a city like Chicago that people talk about like dogs because of what's in drill music, to have yeah. them fuck with me. And they're, they're as rough. 
They're as rough as you think they would be, but it's with love. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when they love you, they really love me. Now, if they didn't fuck with you, I wouldn't have no yeah, career. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. because they love me, they show me a lot of love. And in New Orleans. New Orleans is always a good time. Um, it's just such a musical it's place. such a musical too. city. Like, New Orleans is amazing. Though. I have all the bounce artists come out for me. So, uh, like, I have Hot Sizzle come out. Uh, this last time I was going to have Super Bad come out. So, it's like all those records that you, you know, Hot Sizzle is the guy you hit on Drake's, uh, what's that one? What's that one? Uh, no, no Feelings? In My Feelings? Okay. Kiki. And that's the one me. in, the, in the, 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 that bounce moment in the beginning. Uh, two, da, 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 that oh, person okay. so that's how sizzle so he comes out and he makes them shake their ass and they go crazy like those cities that have like real huge cultural oh in nashville i can't forget nashville okay nashville surprised you bugged i didn't expect that yeah yeah. i didn't expect that we went to nashville and i was like oh we'll probably never be back here yeah we've been back like four times sold out every time yeah nashville, nashville is the shit. great music city again great music city yeah and always new york yeah and i bought i bought pop smoke's mother out this time oh shit. this last time so i bought pop smoke's mother out um, next time you're in New York, I'm in there, bro. Listen, that's without a doubt. Yeah, next without time in New down. York, I'm in there, bro. Listen, we got. I'm we, singing too. You had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you had no choice. <laughs> you might guess you had no choice. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Taylor, what we got, man? Some church you announcements. No, yeah, you. Okay, I'll go next. Um, <laughs> you know, I was just Taylor? saying for Bully I mean, the Beast I or do. something you wanted to shout out, but yo, oh, we announced in uh, uh, the uh, Canadian leg of the Infamous tour. Um, just to fill you guys in on some of the controversy that's been going on, there was this venue out there that, that uh, found out that we were going to perform there, and then they said we couldn't perform at the venue Massey Hall because of inappropriate jokes, so we moved it to another venue, and the great people of Toronto, they liked the inappropriate jokes, so they sold that shit out three times, and it was crazy, and we said, you know what, uh, I'm not going to let these venues decide whether or not we give the Canadian people the jokes that they want, the jokes that they need, so we're going to do a Canadian leg of the tour. Those tickets are up uh, right now, pre-sale code is Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-Z, and we are coming to Vancouver, Montreal, Winnipeg, and Calgary. Obviously, we have the shows in Toronto. Fuck, we might add another Toronto show. Because Toronto you got to host the Toronto, Toronto shows. Love, I love Toronto. Toronto's amazing. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to the Toronto shows. You got to come yeah, through. Those I'm are going to be wild. That's going to be a wild time. So yeah, theandrewschultz.com. Make sure you use the pre-sale code. The regular sale goes on sale Friday, but get there early. You could do that right now. And um, just more cities. Go to theandrewschultz.com. We added more cities to the tour. Also, I'm getting married. Not stop. The goal is to go through the New York show here. Mm -hmm. I have a show in Atlantic City after that one, but the New York show here, Radio City. The 16th. The 16th, April 16th. You got to be there, bro. Oh, I'm, That's we already spoke about that. I'm going to be know, there. I know. That's going to be fun. But uh, so, yeah, the goal is to go through that. And then I want to do, uh, well, I can't announce it just yet. Oh, oh that's yeah, my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Those are my favorite ones. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do some fun shit. We're going to talk to us, Taylor. Um, also, go to Bully and the Beast podcast, the uh, Instagram. Uh, go to the link. We got a live show coming February 5th. And for those who I know how New York is with like, you know, vaccine and cars and everything, you guys can stream too. And they're actually cheaper than the other tickets uh, to actually be physically there. But yeah, there's going to be games, special guests, and Wax is going to give his idiotic, brilliant advice uh, live. And so is Will uh, L'Oreal. Well, so I'm going to be out, there if I'm in town. Yes, yeah. check out you Podcast February Frenemies, 5th? February 5th. That's my at, parents', that's my parents birthday. I'm going to bring both. I'm going to bring them. I'm bringing <laughs> okay, them. You got the same at birthday? The yeah. Or <laughs> year, year apart. Get out of yeah, here. February 5th and 6th. I mean, be February 5th. One was born. My mom's older than my dad by a year. Get wow. out of here. Well, bring Yo, honestly, <laughs> that's fire. There's nothing. I can't compete, bro. No, no. I mean, just like for the both of them, it's like. Let's just do one party for both of us. Oh, here goes the other part. Neither one of them give a fuck about birthdays. Of course. So they just be like, they chill. They chill. They don't care. They're not yeah. high strung about none of this shit. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Al. Boy, I'm not done. Oh shit. <laughs> Nobody listening to this shit for that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying this at go, the Caveat go. Theater. That's it in New York what, City. What theater? Caveat, I think that's how you say it. What was that? Midtown? C A V E A T. Sure, let's go with that. Caveat Theater in Midtown. And they can get tickets at? At the Bullying the Beast. It's an event break, but it's um go to Bullying the Beast podcast Instagram or you know, anywhere. <laughs> it's gonna be on Bring Idiots too. So awesome. we're going to put the link on there. Too. And we're going to be in there. If I'm in town that weekend, I'm there. I promise. Same. Okay. It's on the weekend. What day of the week is it? Do you it's know? On Saturday. Saturday. If I'm in town, I'll be there. Yes. Thank you. I'm excited for your first show. <laughs> Al? 
And we're recording at WTF Media Studios. If you like the quality and sound, come here, book your session, WTFmediastudios.com. Yes, sir. All right. Um, let's wrap this up. Let's do some asking idiots. You go, yeah, your boy gotta make a bowel movement. <laughs> your boy gotta make, I gotta move some units. Uh let's see what we got here. Okay? This is based off of um, I guess earlier, how you called out uh Alex for ah, that's hops. funny. Mr. underscore E underscore <laughs> Lee. Can we create a positive stigma for blacks to join law enforcement? Be the change. That's a good question. No. I, I think that's a good question. The answer is no. Okay, talk I know to me a white why. person. I know a white person asked that question. The answer is no, because the... Mr. The, e. Lee? It's either black or Asian. No, Mr. E. Lee. Robert E. Lee. Oh, yeah, that's a white guy. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was slick, huh? He really thought he was slick. <laughs> Removing Robert. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> okay. Um, The reason I say that is because, one, the inherent... The, the, the history of the police force, they were slave troops. Okay. They're slave catchers. That's what the police, that's where policing comes from. I don't subscribe to that. You don't subscribe to the truth? I don't know. There if that's was no the truth. So there was no, if, if we go I've back. I've heard and, this rumor. It's not a rumor. You can. But you, what you have to understand is okay, that like listening. police forces have existed throughout humanity. It was either the army or mm -hmm. somebody that was making sure that the law was upheld. Like Rome, I'm sure, had right. like a police force. Right. So to say that its only purpose was to. It was the, which was the army, which I agree with you. So in. And during that time, during antebellum times, there was the army was the people you would see the troops uh, visibly in these villages. Right, right, right. Once slavery became a thing, they said, well, it was always a thing. But once it became the number one export import for America at the time, right. they said, oh, well, we need somebody to go catch these if when they, they run, run away. away. And yeah, we yeah. need to go get some more because people tend to forget. Uh, slavery, terrible thing. Let's not ever forget that. Yeah. But people tend to forget, not all white people could afford slaves. It was expensive to have slaves. Yeah. So what would somebody do who's trying to cut course? Uh, cut course? Oh, I can't, I can't get the real one. I can't get these slaves the right way. Or yeah. I can't get these slaves the way everyone else. I can't purchase them the way everyone yeah. else does. Yeah, yeah. But I do know somebody who's out here snatching free black people and selling them cheaper. Oh, so there was like a white Omar? <laughs> <laughs> there was people robbing a dope dealer is that what you're saying <laughs> what I'm saying is there were white people that right. were going out catching free people and right. selling them into slavery gotcha, gotcha. and that is how gotcha. sla that's how people cut costs gotcha so to do that you were using either these vigilantes or these you know one off people right. or you were using the slave patrol if you look at these badges these right. badges are the same badges they were using back then right so right. if you ask me can is there a way for black people to infiltrate that and change it no because the black people that are going into it are being indoctrinated with that same bullshit right so now they're just doing the same job as the but white there men. was police forces in places that didn't rely on the slave trade as well I, there's no question that that mm -hmm. was part of the job mm -hmm. i just i think that it's kind of misleading to say that that was like the sole purpose of the job and then all of a sudden they started policing other things mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think i that, get you i think they yeah, I, I, there's no question that there's a history of it mm -hmm. and it's fucked up. But I do think that you can enter certain spaces and then change those spaces, man. Not when it's something this insidious Come like on. this. Hmm? Come on, though. So there's oh, crime. Oh, man. Nah, 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 Cop saying, Alex here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you're familiar. There's crime everywhere. There's crime so everywhere, yes. Would you prefer Spec someone from the culture to police their own than somebody outside the culture who may not know how things go down and then they're going to interact with people of a different culture in a way that they're not used to. So you That's know a good point. there's like people, let's just say white people will go into a neighborhood that they don't feel comfortable in. So black people alone, going, but the black people in these uniforms going in neighborhoods that they're not used to. Yeah, but and I'm they have saying, the same reaction. Well, what would you prefer? I would, I, would, I, would I would prefer neither one. I would prefer none of them Stop, in there. But, but if you there ask me a question. I'm just saying there needs to be though. I don't, I don't, and that's where I inherently, and that's where I disagree the most. I don't agree with there being a police form. I don't. I do think we would benefit <laughs> greatly from abolishing police and then creating something new. Like, but what? you have to a abolish police. Like a, different type a new <laughs> police. A, a new, you can't reform what you. We keep saying it's we want to be reform. a police force, though. Right. But if we break what's been this police form that's been going on, right, right. this has been a police form that's been going on for centuries. Yeah. And yeah. at the heart of it has been, Keep your foot on the black and the poor. So I guess I guess what what I would say about the police is, and and I have empathy for them because I feel like they're the 
they're the group of people that deal with the problems of systemic racism the most and systemic like, mm -hmm. income mm -hmm. inequality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we put these rules in place to hold down certain groups of people. Yes. And when they break the law, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't want to say maybe largely, but when they, they break the law because of the situations that they were forced to live in, mm -hmm. we got one group of people who got to punish them for breaking the law. Right. Right. So it's like, now it's like you making these cops deal with all the fuck shit that politicians put in place. But what about the for years? So it's just, you see what I'm trying to say? It's but like, it's become sure. But like that police say, didn't make redlining, but they help enforce it. Of course. And you know why they help enforce it? Because they benefit from it. Why? Because they don't want to live next door to niggas either. Sure, 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 sure. They they benefit for it. I hear what you're saying right there, but they're also doing it because now I'm not saying you should just do your job because you should. Like that's wrong. Like that's what the fucking Nazis did. Like they were doing. They just they did told. their job. You don't, right. you don't do that shit. But what is it like? You have a moral obligation to break immoral laws. That being said, I do empathize with the position they're put in, where we just make them be the one stop shop for all the fuck shit that we did throughout history. It's like we got to also take some accountability, and then sure, we got to apply do some that? change to that. What I'm saying is just scrap but they it. They don't want the change. I guess what I'm trying to say is if we just scrap it and make a new version of it. The new version got to be better. Yeah, it's got to be better, but it's going to still deal with all the problems we made. So not if you, the not same if, problems are going to arise. I, 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 Income equality didn't go away. Income equality doesn't go away. But with something new, you have new eyes viewing income equality. What about this? What about this? You start fixing the problems that cause these situations, right? You start dealing with Income equality, you start dealing with mental health. Don't you think their job will have less fuck up a bull situations? No. See, I think their job will have less because fuck up with people, bull situations. Because the job isn't something they're stepping into. They're yeah. they're in act no no no. The situation a lot is. these cops that we're talking about, yeah, with these fuck upable moments that yeah. cost black people their lives. Yeah. Everyone. I know other people die, sure, but sure, sure, at sure. the numbers, black people are dying the yeah, most yeah, out yeah. of these fuck fuck up situations. And what happens is it's not so much the job, it's the people going into the job. So the uniform is the uniform. The person that steps in the uniform already has a fucked up view of black people, right, right. already has a fucked up view of white people, already has a fucked up view of poor people and right. who is deserving of what. You get what I'm saying? So now they just have, now this uniform just gives them the wherewithal, the ability and the confidence and yeah. courage to act on it. No, I 100% think that there are bad people in every situation. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, there's a kid who's growing up in a certain neighborhood, let's just say because it's the most talked about example, like yeah. Chicago, yeah. Mm -hmm. where the kid basically reaches a certain age where he's getting beat up every day on his way to school. And he's like, man, I'm tired of getting beat up every day on the way to school. I got to join up with some dudes so I don't get beat up. Okay. So he got to join up with these dudes and I get beat up. Now he got to do a certain amount of fuck shit so these dudes allow him to be in because you can't just join up, not get beat up. And 100% agree. I'm with so you. So now you're doing fuck shit that you didn't want to do. You just want to get go to school without getting beat up. Right. Now he can't go to school without getting beat up. He don't have his dad to take him to school because okay. his dad got locked up yep. off of some weed charge yep. that... Now weed is legal, but he's still fucking in yep. jail. 100% agree. Right? So now- That's and a systemic issue. I see where you're going. So I see I'm where like, you're going. All these different things. And I'm like- There's only one difference. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, well, what if we started fixing these systemic issues so the pops ain't in jail? We started fixing moms, these- Mom's able to earn a great living. And mm -hmm. and now we have enough- Now we have the dad who gets to drive to school yeah, every single- Now I, he don't have to join up with his gang. And now all of a sudden you have a kid who's not walking around the streets with a gun, gets in an altercation- and I have to boom somebody. And, and maybe he doesn't, or maybe a cop is hearing, oh shit, these kids in this neighborhood are crazy, violent. He hears about all these shots. Now the cop is walking in that situation, black, white, Asian, no matter what the cop is. He's walking in with his gun ready to go because he's like, oh fuck, I hear these kids are shooting. Mm -hmm. no, the way you solve that, at least for me, is you fix the problems that almost force that kid, or yeah, force that kid into that life. If you make him not have that life, mm -hmm. you fix those problems. Then the next time that cop sees that kid, He's dapping them up at a fucking police athletic league right. basketball game. Few things wrong with a few things inherently wrong with that. One, I think the first one I would address is the fact that I do agree with you with fixing the systemic issues. I'm, I I don't want this to be taken that mouse does not believe. I believe the systemic issues are at the root of the problem. But triage to me says if somebody comes in with a bullet hole and they got diabetes, 
I'm a, let me let me try and stop this. But let me stop this bleeding before I start talking about the motherfucking yeah. diabetes. I, yeah, right? I'm with you. Yeah. The bullet hole right now is us dying at the hands of police and no one being held accountable. Yeah. Right. So yes, the systemic issues need to change. They 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 need to be high on the priority list. Yeah. But what we need to do is immediately stop the bleeding, which is the black bodies that drop and nobody is held accountable for them. Yes, I when agree. It's, especially when it's done um, at the hands of police. Yes. Right? So that's what we need to stop. Um, then the other thing is... How? How? By just getting rid of all police? No. I think at the greater... At the greater... Because that they got rid of police and then the deaths in, went up. And over in... Uh, was that in everywhere where Seattle? they got rid of them? I think that happened in, <laughs> in Portland. It happened. I think, but like, I, it happened I mean, in Minneapolis. But I don't. I don't think it's fair to police yeah, that deter happened. crime. I'm not saying they're the best. They're the best uh, that we can't improve police. But you can't. I don't think we can because they're doing exactly what they're to do. Well, we could we can make change. I guess that's a longer that's mm-hmm. a longer discussion. But like. I think we can make a better version of anything. We can make a better version of an electric car. We can make a better version of the police force. Mm-hmm. We can make a better version of... I don't think we can make a better version of this police form. I we don't do, think we... You don't think I we think do? we, I don't I, I don't think we can because it's in... Like I said earlier, it, that shit is incessant. It's in, it, it's yeah. in the blue. That's what this shit is. The huh. fucked up way to view black and poor people. It's in the blue. You yeah. wear that suit... And that is the thing. The you talk about the quotas. Yeah. You talk about people pulling you to the side. Hey, you didn't pull over enough people this week. You know where you gotta go and yeah. fix that. Yeah. That's a real thing. And when somebody stands against it, they silence them and get them the fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we need people of color in those positions of power so they don't get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like Eric Adams. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. They yeah. get those people out of there. Yeah. Because well, now the he's Brad- mayor. And watch what the fuck. Yeah. Me and Alex are fucked. He's not. Yeah, yeah, he's not for us. Fuck. That's what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he we're fucked. Ah, he's team blue. He's but, a cop. Yeah, yeah. He, once a cop, always a cop. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't blame that. But, like, I see why. So I, I get what you're way. saying. So you're saying we have to just uh, restart the whole system. Yes. When you restart, that's what I'm saying. Well, back to the original question. When you restart the whole system, wouldn't you want representation in that system? With a new system? So yes. Okay. So, but in just having more black people join this fucked up system uh, okay. is what I'm against. But you, right. you recognize realistically... Uh, that we one, can't huh? restart a system like there's, there's a I police think we're force. On, I think we're on the brink of restarting a few systems with just the way the last 17 to 24 months have been going. I think we're going to see a lot of reset to systems. You are leading a charge in a reset of a system, you know, on a on, on a different scale, you, you know, with how you attack comedy and how you attack. And how That's you ideological. Pot. There's a difference mm-hmm. between ideology mm-hmm. and like behavior mm-hmm. and actuality and like systems in place. So like for comedy, the way that I have done comedy mm-hmm. and also the way that I put out comedy mm-hmm. content. Yeah. I can change the way that comics put out their content and then maybe set a standard for how, you know, comedy can be done mm-hmm. in an environment where, you know, it's very difficult to make mm-hmm. certain jokes. Mm-hmm. Right. So I could do that. But when it comes to like a police force, it's like, there's like budgets and shit that go into it. There's pension funds. Like there's, there's, it, it, it's a There's much different structure. There's unions and all of that. But what you can do is change an ideology that can then affect those systems. Not behind that wall. That's where you and I behind that probably wall, disagree. That wall yeah. that says if a, if, a, if a woman cop is raped yeah. by another cop, you shut the fuck up. If a cop... If, yeah, if I didn't it, know that was the rule. Well, that, that code... If Alex, tell me why I'm wrong. The code of blue, that blue They're wall of silence. Female cops. Nah, I mean, like if you just do anything, it's hush hush. Everything stays in house. Right. No one gets in trouble. No one speaks up. Like yeah, that is we just, take care. We culture. we yeah. we police our own, but there's no policing. Yeah, but like a but, woman but cop. Can't rape. That's that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So Jesus so Christ. listen, listen. Uh, I, I forgot. I forgot where I just seen this shit. Why but, isn't she the code? Why isn't she the blue too? What happened to protect the blue? She's blue. Right. Because there's no such thing as blue. There's no such thing as a blue life. It doesn't exist unless you're in a fucking James Cameron movie. There's no <laughs> blue lives. Right. You're still black. You're still white. You're still a man. You're still a woman. And you have to live mm. that life once you take that uniform off. But they have been conditioned to believe that that uniform is a part of their character. 
mm-hmm. they'll protect the blue before they protect black, white, yellow. Mm-hmm. We have, and that is the thought process. We have to do away with that. We have to destroy that system and let a new one begin. But as a former military member, you were a part of the same system. Uh, it's you a little did. different. Yeah. Because that's why you call it, a, you that's go, why the police are called a paramilitary. You other people and you have no idea why you're killing these people. So I can come home. But it's an equal threat. I'm here. Somebody they're, has a gun. But they're I, saying the point. same thing. They're saying the same thing. They're policing these communities and it's like, hey, I had to do what I do. But no home. one's attacking them. No I mean, one's attacking them. Sometimes I mean, people are attacking them. And, and they, also, they don't know the threat. <laughs> nobody nobody, attack, a, nobody no, no, attacking no. us, bro. <laughs> yeah, but well, Mouse, Mouse. They're walking when in, we land, they're when walking boots on ground. a scene not knowing what's going to go. Fuck the scene. Happen. They're creating the scene. That's what that's what they would say about us. Yeah. <laughs> Who's us? Us, America. Americans going out there in the other Middle places. East and shit. We yeah. created the scene. That's, that's what they what would say. Right. And then they send a bunch of useless bodies over there and then are surprised when we come back. And that's why we're living out in the streets and, and things of that nature. But that's, neither, that's a whole nother discussion. Right. They send us over there. At least when we get there, no one's, no one is going. But this is, this is, a, sorry to interrupt, but this is a good point where it's just like, we're not going to get rid of the military anytime soon, but you know, we could. I'm not this, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to be no, painted no, as I'm no, super pro military. No, no, I'm just no, 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 no. take I, care I, of the people I, that I took care of us. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying like, we're not going to get rid of the military anytime soon, but I bet even the people in the military would agree like, Yo, like, let's not waste these people's time. Let's not have them fighting pointless wars. Let's not get, let their fucking legs get blown off for shit that we shouldn't even be there in the first place. And that's a change in ideology. And I bet even people in the military be like, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. want to be out here, you know, having shit explode all around me for no goddamn reason. So where are the police? So, and, and so we why have- don't we also do that to police? We could keep the police, but just find a way to change the ideology. And I, if that was possible, yeah. I would be with you. I am with you in theory, yes. But it's there's just- zero way to do it. Fair enough. For the simple fact, and Alex, Alex, my dog, I love him. Yes. Alex, I love you. you know, I, I, for the simple fact of Alex's first instinct was to what? When we started this conversation, his first instinct was to defend police. No, I, I don't know. No, I, no, 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 that no, was no, his first defend, instinct. No, no, no. I said it would help to for inclusion of black people in the police system. Yeah, he didn't say that he was defending what they did. He was like, we we need to change what they're doing. Like I was- And it, having more black people. a very, yeah. very small degree, I was changing the system when I was in it. Because mm-hmm. like when I saw white cops who would speak a certain way to, you know, defendants that I didn't like, I'd be like, yo, chill. Like, okay. So it's like, that's changing the system from within. And mm-hmm. you can only do that unless you have some representation. And you there. create a more passive environment because now when you're talking to these people, you're talking to these defendants, Right. And you're speaking to them in a certain way where they're not hyped up, angry, mm-hmm. pissed off because mm-hmm. they've been abused by the fucking court officers. And then by the time they get to trial, they're just screaming on people. Right. It's like, nah, they're getting in there with a court officer that might understand them, knows how to talk to them, respects them. And now they're coming into court. They're like, OK, fine. I might have a shot. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have my fist ball. I'm about to swing on somebody because these cops are riling me the fuck up before. I don't know. I, I could see little change, but I could also see how someone who's you know have your experience mm-hmm. could think that it's impossible for change to happen i would just keep looking at it right i've yeah. been out the streets i just know how great years. white people are oh shit i know what we're capable of <laughs> and i know that we can I, be no, the no, change listen. we want to see in the world <laughs> listen we all know this had white all, males we all know what y'all <laughs> capable of <laughs> Oh, oh, shit gonna change. Shit Y'all might not like change. it, but shit gonna change. <laughs> anyway, look, Miles Jones, I love you, bro. Love Thank you, bro. you so much for coming out, man. I appreciate you holding it down while Charlotte's gone. Of course. Um, guys, this has been another episode of Brilliant Idiots. If you think we said something uh, absolutely a genius, uh, you are right. If you think we said something that is absolutely ridiculous, idiotic even, you are right, too. This is the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.